The Jell-O Program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our master of ceremonies, who has just returned from a quick trip to Chicago, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. If you log in, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don Quick Trip is right. I was in Chicago and back before I knew it. 3,600 miles. Oh, that's really traveling. Did you fly, Jack, or did you go by train? I took the train, Don, and you know, that's the first time I've ever been on the streamliner. You talk about modern design, I never saw anything like it. Take the engine was streamlined, the coaches were streamlined, and the compartments were so compact and narrow. Well, you see, Jack, uh, that's to cut down wind resistance. Everything has to be streamlined. I know, Don, and I'm in favor of it. But when the conductor asked me to tape back my ears, I thought that was going too far. <laughs> After all, how much can they slow the train down? <laughs> but at that, you do save a lot of time. Oh, it? there's no question about it. In fact, the next time I go east, I think I'll take the streamliner myself. With your hips? <laughs> That would spoil the whole effect. Huh? <laughs> After all, Jack, I could do the same as you did and tape my hips back. You could, eh? Well, Don, let me know when you're going to use that much adhesive tape. <laughs> I want to buy some Johnson & Johnson stock. <laughs> That'll really start a boom. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Good to see you. We kind of missed you around here all week. Well, thanks, kid. I'll thanks. bet it was pretty chilly in Chicago, huh? Well, it was for me, Mary. I'm used to this warm California climate, and that cold air sort of got me. My teeth were chattering all the time. Why didn't you put them in your pocket? <laughs> well, there's our little Mary right on schedule. I go all the way to Chicago to appear at a benefit, and you can't even ask me, did they like me? How did I go over? Was I a big hit? I'll ask you, Jack. Were you a big hit? Don, they adored me. <laughs> There were 6,000 people in that civic opera house, and when I made my entrance, you'd think that... Oh, let's forget it. Nobody but a conceited ham could describe that ovation. <laughs> now, really, the minute I walked on that stage, the audience screamed. Well, how often do they see a guy with his ears taped back? <laughs> that wasn't the only reason. I've always been a big hit in Chicago. Hiya, Jackson. You back in town? Yep. Well, I was hoping you wouldn't make it. You know, I was going to do a lot of those snappy gags tonight. Oh, you were? Yeah, I had a swell monotone already. That's monologue. <laughs> monotone. I wish you wouldn't correct me all the time, Jackson. It makes people think I don't know big words. Well, you don't. I've been going to night school for six months now. When are you going to learn something? Don't worry. I'll get there. Romeo wasn't built in a day. <laughs> Fine. Huh? Romeo, yeah. Say, Phil, why don't you ask Jack if he was a big hit in Chicago? Don and I got a faithful of it already. Well, I was a hit. What do you want me to do, lie about it? Oh, yeah, you played that big benefit for the Greek War Relief, didn't you? Yes, and it was a swell affair, too. Uh, did you get paid for it? No. No, it was a benefit, Mary. Naturally, I didn't get any money. Uh, did you know that ahead of time? Well, certainly. <laughs> Certainly I did. Of course. Well, didn't you even sell magazines on the train? Oh, quiet. <laughs> and that reminds me, Mary, I want you to stop kidding me about being cheap. Thanks to you, I had the most embarrassing thing happen at the station in Chicago. Oh, was it, Jack? Well, Mary keeps saying I'm cheap so much, people get to believe it. Here's what happened, Don. I got off the train in Chicago carrying four heavy grips, and all the red caps just stood there looking at me. You mean they didn't offer to take your baggage? No, they just stood there. So I said, well, how about it? Will one of you fellows help me or not? Finally, one little red cap came over and said, I'll take your grips, Mr. Benny. Uh-huh. So I said, are you sure you want to? He said, yes, if you can do a benefit, I can. <laughs> so you see, Mary, you're to blame for the whole thing. All right, why don't you buy a second-hand gun, one bullet, and shoot me? That's exactly the kind of remark I'm referring to. Hello, Mr. Benny. Did you have a good time in Chicago? Hmm. You're a little late tonight, aren't you, young man? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Dennis, but I'll have to fine you $10. Well, the benefit's over. <laughs> Mary, that's an old established rule on this program. The last one in gets it. I'm sorry, Dennis. Well, it's not my fault, Mr. Benny. I was stuck in a phone booth for 10 minutes. Stuck in a phone booth? What do you mean? Well, I was talking to my girl over the phone. Uh-huh. And when I kissed her goodbye, my lips got caught in the mouthpiece. 
My goodness, Dennis, as long as your girl wasn't right there, you didn't have to kiss her with so much feeling. Well, she says I'm better over the phone than in person. <laughs> well, she ought to know. What a kid. Say, huh? Jackson, that reminds me. Did you call up that number I gave you in Chicago? What number? You know, the one I gave you before you left. Mamie Peterson. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a smart trick you pulled on me, Phil. I called her up and her husband answered the phone. That was Mamie. She talks like a man. <laughs> What? You ought to hear her sing Asleep in the Deep. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, I'm not going to discuss it now, Phil, as we have a long show. Dennis, are you ready for your song? How can I sing with this mouthpiece on? You'll sing. <laughs> You'll sing. Go ahead. This is some program. Dennis is wearing a mouthpiece. you got tape on your ears, and my slip is showing. Well, pull it out. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> that was Two Hearts That Pass in the Night, sung by Dennis Day through a mouthpiece which belongs to the Southern California Telephone Company. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last week, for our feature attraction this evening and our cultural contribution of the season, we have with us tonight four youngsters from one of radio's most popular programs, which comes to you every Wednesday night from Chicago, The Quiz Kids. These, uh, these children are here tonight to match wits with Mary Livingston, Don Wilson, Dennis Day, and Phil Harris. And I will be the quiz master. That is, I will ask the question. You're picking out a pretty safe job, ain't you, Jackson? <laughs> no, no, that's not it. That's not it at all. Of course not. I can understand Jack's side of it. He's had much more experience in the quiz kids, and naturally he doesn't want to take advantage of them. Certainly. And besides, he's as yellow as a banana. <laughs> Oh, I'm yellow, eh? Well, for your information, Mary, a week from Wednesday, a week from next Wednesday, I am going to be quizzed on the Quiz Kids program. Well, you won't need that tape. They'll pin your ears back. <laughs> oh, quiet. Now, let's see. Where did I put that list of baffling questions? Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? Do I have to answer some of the questions, too? Yes, Dennis, and I'm depending on you to pull the Jello team through to ultimate victory. Do you think you can do it? Yes, sir. Good. And now, folks... Ultimate? What does that mean? <laughs> oh, fine. That's a nice start we're getting, huh? Don't worry, Jackson. Ask me the tough ones. I'll pull it through to ultimate. That's ultimate victory. <laughs> Phil? That's ultimate victory. Uh, ultimate is an adjective. Why not? <laughs> Well, I'd call this off right now, but the quiz kids came all the way from Chicago. Don, I hope you won't let us down. I'll do my best, Jack. Of course, it's only fair to tell you that in school, I flunked in everything but cooking. I, uh... <laughs> I, uh, I see. Hmm. What's going to happen to us shouldn't happen to Einstein. <laughs> you've, uh, you've got something there, Mary. Oh, well, we'll do the best we can. Hold it a minute. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Rochester, I'm very busy right now. You'll have to call me later. But this is important, boss. Carmichael just came out of hibernation. Carmichael? Why, that's impossible. That polar bear was supposed to sleep in the basement for two more weeks. How did he happen to wake up? Well, the gas man went downstairs to read the meter, and all of a sudden it sounded like feeding time at the zoo. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, what happened to the gas man? I don't know, but I doubt if we get a bill this month. <laughs> now, that... now, that's just silly. Rochester, Carmichael wouldn't hurt a fly. He was just playing, that's all. Yeah, but where's the man? <laughs> Stop being so pessimistic. Now, Carmichael's pretty hungry after sleeping all winter, so the first thing you have to do is give him a big dinner. Well, all we got in the icebox is some roast beef. All right, put that on a plate and give it to him. Uh-huh. But, uh, don't, uh, don't let him eat too fast. This is his first meal. Second meal? Where's the man? <laughs> Forget about the gas man. He must have run away. Now, there's nothing to be afraid of, Rochester. After you feed Carmichael, take him in the bathroom and give him a nice warm bath. Uh-huh. Scrub him good, comb his hair, and brush his teeth. Uh-huh. 
And then after you've done that... After I've done what? After you brush his teeth. I forgot to tell you, while I was combing his hair, I fainted. What? Threw some brandy on me. Now cut that out. And if you're such a baby, I'll take care of the whole thing when I get home. Now, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Are you really going to have the quiz kids on your program tonight? Yes, I am. They're supposed to be pretty smart, ain't they? They're brilliant. They know everything. Well, ask them what happened to the gas man. <laughs> Will you forget about it? <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> I can't understand why Carmichael got up so early this year. He must have had coffee before going to bed. Play, Phil. I'm sure the gas man got away all right. That, uh, that was a very short number played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, and quite enough, believe me. Oh, Gerard, uh, Gerard, are all you children here? Yes, we are, Mr. Benny. Good, good. Well, here we go, folks. The Quiz Kids versus the Jello Kids. And may the best team win. May the better team win. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, uh, better. That's right, just a little I mispronounced the word there. <laughs> All right, I will now call the roll. First, the quiz kid, Richard. I am Richard Williams. I'm 11 years old, and I'm in the sixth grade at Harrison School, East Chicago, Indiana. Neat cute. You know, folks, uh, Richard's a whiz at mathematics. Claude? I am Claude Brenner. I'm 12 years old, and I'm a sophomore at Senn High School. Well, I was a sophomore once. <laughs> yes, sir, I was sharp as a tack. Now you can sit on one and not even feel it. <laughs> Quiet. Joan? I'm Joan Bishop. I'm 14 years old, and I go to the Chicago School for Adults. Yeah, oh, she's sweet. You see, Joan knows everything about music. She does, huh? Yes. Fortissimo, kid. Top that. <laughs> Keep out of this, Phil. You don't even know what fortissimo means. Ah, oh, stop, will you? Fortissimo means when you're playing a violin and you pluck on the string. <laughs> That's a cadenza. <laughs> Isn't it, Joan? <laughs> no, Mr. Benny. When you pluck the strings, the musical term is pizzicato. Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. I was thinking of raviola. <laughs> That's, uh, that's it, Joan. Oh, brother. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be all right, Joan. Don't worry. Now, who's next? Oh, yes, Gerard. I'm Gerard Darrow. I'm eight years old and I go to the Bradwell School. Eight years old, yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Jell-O Kid, Philip. I'm Philip Harris, and I attend the Hollywood Recreation Bowling Alley. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? Uh, what do you specialize in, Philip? Funny monotones. We know. <laughs> and now, Mary. <laughs> Mary? I am Mary Livingston. I am six years old, and I graduated from the May Company. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely school. Uh, what did you learn there, Mary? If you worn the stockings, madam, you cannot exchange them. <laughs> Very good. Isn't she bright? Now, Donald. I am Don Wilson. I'm seven years old, and I have eight chins. <laughs> Isn't he a doll? Sit down, Donald, but easy. <laughs> now, Dennis. I am Dennis... Uh, Dennis? Day. Dennis Day. <laughs> Fine chance we've got. <laughs> How old are you, Dennis? I'll be one in December. <laughs> You'll be one? Yes, my mother's raffling me off. <laughs> well, well, I don't blame her. And now, folks, we will proceed with the battle of wits. And I would like to announce that I am personally awarding a prize of $10 to the winning team. That's fair enough. You'll find out. <laughs> now, now, our first question this evening comes from Miss Edna West of Evanston, Illinois. Listen carefully, Gerard. A coleoptera, a musca domestica, and a lepidoptera were having a bit of a tete a tete on a screen door. Now, if you suddenly appeared with a fly swatter, one of the party would leave quite hastily. Who would it be? The coleoptera, the musca domestica, or the lepidoptera? Wipe your chin. Why? <laughs> Uh, 
Now, Gerard, have you have you the answer? Yes, sir. The Musca Domestica had a reason to leave in a hurry because it was the common housefly. Mm-hmm. The Coleoptria and the Lepidoptria shouldn't leave in a hurry because the Coleoptria is the beetle, the Lepidoptria is the moth. Very good, Gerard. That's one point for the quiz, kids. <laughs> now, Dennis, in order to be absolutely fair, I'm going to ask you a question along the same line. Now, listen carefully. What fly would you associate with butter? <laughs> well, uh, hmm, well that, that's a little tough, so I'll put it this way. Butter is associated with what fly? The butterfly, of course. Gerard, I didn't ask you. <laughs> this question is for the Jello kid. Dennis, do you know the answer? No, sir. Mary Living. <laughs> Mary Livingston. The butterfly. Correct. And there's a point for the jello team. <laughs> Both sides are even. Now, let's see. Or is it a bumblebee? The question is over. <laughs> now, here's a problem in mathematics sent in by Miss Catherine Johnston of Los Angeles. I think this is in your department, Richard. I'm ready, Mr. Benny. Now, listen carefully. Two men who earn $450 and $150 a month, respectively, decide to build a house and divide the cost in proportion to their income. Each of these two men has three sons who help with the work, but they cannot work full time. Listen carefully. One works every day, uh, the second every other day, the third every 30, and so on. Are you following, Richard? Yes. Are you? Don't worry about me, Bob. <laughs> now, they, uh, they all work the first day. Get this carefully. They all work the first day and finish the house the second day that they all work together. Each guy has three kids, huh? They'll go away, will you? <laughs> now, Richard, one joint owner, I mean one joint owner... <laughs> had to pay $1,500 more than the other. How much did the house cost, and how long did it take to build it? Well, Richard, have you figured out the answer yet? Yes, sir. The house cost $3,000, and it would be 60 days before the house was finished. Excellent. $3,000 and 60 days is correct. How do you know? I trust Richard. <laughs> Now, Dickie boy, will you please, Richard, will you please tell us how you arrived at the 60 days? Well, you fi- find the prime factors in each number and multiply them the most times they appear in any one group of numbers. Uh-huh. So that would be mu- multiplying 1 by 2 by 2 by 3 by 5. Oh, yeah. If you don't get that prime factor, you're a dead pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, really? You... Oh, you must prime it up, you know. You... If I was Richard, I'd kick you right in the shin. Why? Continue, Richard. By multiplying these prime factors together, you get the product of 60, which is the least common multiple of these numbers. Obviously. Very good, Richard. I was afraid you'd miss on that least common multiply. Or multiply. <laughs> and there's another point for the quiz kid making the score two to one. Now, Mary, here's your question. The answer is 15. Wait till I ask you. <laughs> Now, Mary, concentrate. If you had 20 apples and your mother took away five, how many would you have? I give up. You know it's 15. <laughs> the score is now two for the quiz kid and two for the jello kid. <laughs> that was a tough one, Mary, but you, you came through. There's something funny going on around here. Gerard. The score is two to two, and both teams are even. Wait a minute. I demand the recount. Dennis, you're on our side. Oh. <laughs> Remember that. Now, Claude. Yes, sir? Here's a problem in the field of ichthyology. Ichthyology? What's that? How do I know? <laughs> now, Claude, name the five subclasses of fish in order of their development and give examples of each. Go ahead, Claude. As far as he's different, but I prefer this setup. Oh, I do. I do, too. <laughs> First comes...
from the cyclist tomato, which are the lamprey eels and hagfishes. Mm -hmm. Next, we find the elasmobranchii, which are the sharks and rays. Mm -hmm. After that, we came up, come upon the gaynoidii, which are the armored fishes, an example of which is the sturgeon. Oh, the sturgeon, yes, I have it quite often, the sturgeon. I, I get it in Lindy's a lot. Right? <laughs> then come the teleostomi, the Oh, the tele, yeah, the tele. Yes. <laughs> of which 90% of the fish world are composed. I see. And last but not least come the dipnoi, which are the lung fishes, of which there are only five species living in the world today. Only five. I thought there were six. Wasn't that funny? <laughs> Very good, sir. Now, Phil Harris, I'm not playing any favorites, so I'm going to ask you a question on the same subject. Are you ready? Yeah. How do you spell fish? Go ahead, fish. F-I-S-C-H. <laughs> That's right, Joe Fish. I know him well. <laughs> That's three points for each side. Both teams are even. Isn't it wonderful how we're running neck and neck? I'm sorry, I know you. Quiet. And now for the final question, and this is the toughest one of all. Joan Bishop. Yes, Mr. Benny? I understand you're an authority in the field of music. That is, you can identify any number played, whether classical or popular. Is that correct? Well, I think I can. You can. That's your specialty. Now, Mr. Harris and his orchestra will play a few bars of a musical selection. Now, Joan, I won't tell you whether it's classical or popular, but see if you can identify this melody. The kid ain't got a chance. <laughs> we shall see. Go ahead, Phil. <laughs> Joan, what's the title of that number? Well, I'm sure. I don't know. Hmm. Well, is it popular or classical? Well, I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> oh, you haven't. Well, Joan, would you like to hear that melody again? Well, I'm afraid that won't help. <laughs> Aha! We stumped one of the quiz kids. Here's your chance, Yellow Kid. Phil Harris, what was the name of it? I don't know. Hey, Eddie, what was the name of that song? I don't know. Hey, Phil, what was the name of that song? I don't know. Hey, Phil! Never mind. The name of that song is There I Go, and the Jello Kids win four to three. <laughs> Congratulations. Tough luck, quiz kid, but you lost fair and square. Play, Phil. We're a little late, so good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I bring you our master of ceremonies, a man who last Sunday night refereed that famous battle of wits between the quiz kids of Chicago and the Jell-O... Hold Jell it, Don, hold it. Mary just called up and said that Jackson won't be here tonight. Well, why not? Well, he's worried to death about his appearance on that quiz kids show next Wednesday night. He's home studying so he'll be as smart as they are. He should live so long. You said it, Dennis. You know, them kids is mental giants. Why, even I'd be afraid to go on that program. No kidding. Well, Jack is taking this pretty seriously. I understand he even had Mary over to his house all day yesterday asking him questions. It's all that's on his mind. The quiz kids. Questions, answers, questions, answers. What a mess. I can't get over it. If my father told me once, he told me a thousand times. <laughs> Go to college, learn something. But no, I had to get into vaudeville. Jack, concentrate. Have you got the answer to this question yet? Hmm. I can name you every vaudeville theater in the country. I even know the first name of every one of Pink's Mule. From Bessie to Jerome. <laughs> but will they ask me that next Wednesday? No. Oh, quit beeping. Do you know the answer to this question or not? No, what is it? 1492. <laughs> Holy smoke, was it that long ago? All right, Mary, ask me another one. Okay, here's an easy one. What's the Taj Mahal? An auto court on Ventura Boulevard. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, the Taj Mahal is in India, and it's one of the seven wonders of the world. Oh, Gee, I'm dumb. I guess I don't know anything, do I? Well, let's keep on anyway. Here's another question. Name the president of the United States whose likeness appears on a $20 bill. A $20 bill? I don't know. Well, go up and look in your mattress. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? 
Say, I wonder if the quiz kids know anything about the Taj Mahal. I'll have to ask them after dinner. After dinner? Yeah, didn't I tell you, Mary? You know, I'm so nuts about those kids, I invited three of them to stay here at my house. I just couldn't let them go to a hotel. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boy? Uh, where are the quiz kids? Well, Richard and Gerard are in the backyard discussing anthropology. <laughs> anthropology, eh? Well, did you hide in the bushes and make notes of what they said? Like I told you to? Yes, sir. And say what? What? Did you know I'm not a Caucasian? <laughs> no, but if they say so, it's right. Now, where's the, uh, where's the other boy, Claude? He's in the library reading Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Well, I'm going to have a tough enough Wednesday night without him pulling that on me. Go in the library and see if you can mix them up. Mix them up? Yes. I tried to, and he said, Oh, fellow, don't mess around. <laughs> the Zooks, I'm cooked. Well, at least find out what he's reading, and I'll read the same thing. See you later. Okay, boy. Parting is such sweet song. Get out of here. Ha <laughs> 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 Jack, here's a question in American history they might ask you. A lot of good that'll do. All I know is show business and vaudeville theaters. Go ahead, anyway. Uh, what city is on an island that was purchased from the Indians for $24? What city is on an island that was... Let's see. I'll give you a clue. Where's the Roxy Theater? New York. New York is the answer. <laughs> I got that one right. You know, Mary, I might do pretty well against those quiz kids Wednesday night. Oh, sure. All I need is a little hint now and then. A big hint would throw you. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Well, that's enough for now, Mary. I'm going to the library and talk to Claude. See you later. Let's see. The Taj Mahal is in New York, and it was built in 1492. I must remember that. And then a... Whoop! Rochester, what are you doing at that keyhole? Bend down here, boys, and take a look at Claude. Now, what's he doing? That boy's got Shakespeare in one hand, H.G. Wells in the other, and his forehead ain't even wrinkled. <laughs> well, I'm going in there and talk to him. Meanwhile, Rochester, why don't you get Richard and Gerard and take him down in the basement to see Carmichael? I better not, boss. That bear's been in a mean mood ever since he came out of hibernation last week. Oh, nonsense. Carmichael's as gentle as a lamb. Then what happened to the gas man? <laughs> Will you stop worrying about the gas man? He probably went downstairs, read the meter, and walked out the basement door. Well, we know he went downstairs, and we know he read the meter. Uh-huh. But walking out that basement door ought to pay fantastic off. <laughs> oh, don't be so pessimistic. Now, take, uh, take Richard and Gerard down to see Carmichael. I'm going in and talk to Claude. Well... How's my little man this evening? Fine, thank you, Mr. Benny. Good, good. I see you're studying up on the immortal bard. That Shakespeare, you know. <laughs> uh, how, uh, how are you coming along? Very well. I'm memorizing Hamlet. Memo memorizing? <laughs> well, look, Claude. Uh, Claude, I want to ask a little favor of you. It's nothing much, but it might help me out. What is it, Mr. Benny? Well... When I appear on your program, I wish you and the rest of the kids would kind of take it easy and miss on a few questions. Miss? Yes. Now, I wouldn't ask you any favors, Claude, but you see, when I was a child back in Waukegan, I was kind of a poor kid, and I didn't have any books or much of an opportunity to learn anything. You know? Well, didn't they have a library in Waukegan? Yes, Claude, but you had to walk up three flights of steps to get there. <laughs> I was such a weak sickly child, I, I didn't have the strength to climb those steps. Huh? Well, didn't you have any friends who could go to the library and get a book for you? No, Claude. Everybody hated me. <laughs> <laughs> they, they used to call me Mouse Face. <laughs> so you see, so you see, Claudie boy, if you'll just if you'll just give your Uncle Jackie a break Wednesday night, you'll be doing me a great favor. Well, I'd like to, Mr. Benny, but I'm afraid that wouldn't be ethical. Oh. We must answer the questions if we know them. Hmm. All right, kid. If it's a battle you want, let's go. 
What's the Taj Mahal? The Taj Mahal is a white marble mausoleum which was built at Agra, mm -hmm. India, by the Shah Jahan as a monument for his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Oh, yes, Mumtaz. <laughs> <laughs> It took 20,000 men 22 years to construct That's this enough, Lord. You know it all right. Now, let me tell you something. As long as you're so ethical, I'm going back and study my books, too. But, Mr. Benny, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You didn't, eh? Well, before I go, kid, here's one that'll stump you. Answer this. Who is the manager of the Penn Theater in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania? <laughs> Come on, come on. What, what's his name? I'm sure I don't know. Johnny Galvin, naturally. <laughs> Think it over, kid. <laughs> that burns me up. Invite him to the house, he can't do me one little favor. Has to be ethical. What kills me at dinner tonight, that kid will probably have four helpings of mashed potatoes. He eats like a horse. Who eats like a horse? Claude. He won't even cooperate with me. Did you pull mouth face on him? Not only that, I have tears in my eyes. Oh, well, ask me some more questions, Mary. Okay. You got him on that Johnny Galvin, though. You should have seen his face, Mary. I'll bet. Here's a good one, Jack. Name the states that border the Mississippi River. The Mississippi? Let's see. There's Missouri, Tennessee, Louisiana, and then there's Idaho. No, that's wrong. No, no, I know. Alabama. <laughs> see, and then there's uh, Kentucky. I guess that's about all. Ask me another question. Okay. Here's one in spelling. How do you spell physiotherapy? What? Physiotherapy. Physiotherapy? Let's see. Capital F. I. -Z. Never mind. Spell cat. Wait a minute. I'm not through with physiotherapy yet. I am, and I'm sick of you, too. It's a fine attitude. Well, I've got a headache again. Come on, Mary. Let's go out in the yard and see what Richard and Gerard are doing. Okay. Burns me up. I'd ever accept that invitation to go on their program. I wouldn't mind being stupid, but I've got gray hair. <laughs> oh, well, this is only Saturday. I've still got four days to study. Yeah, why worry? You might get run over before Wednesday. With my luck, they broadcast from the hospital. Where are you going, Rochester? I'm going out in the kitchen and fix dinner. Well, did you take the children downstairs to see Carmichael? Boss, I don't think I ought to take those kids near that polar bear. Now, listen, Rochester, if you're so worried about what happened to the gas man, for goodness sake, call up the gas company. I did call the gas company. What did they say? Where's the man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're as crazy as Mr. Billingsley. Now, call us as soon as dinner is ready. I'll be with Gerard and Richard. Physiotherapy. I hope I can... Oh, there they are. See those kids are cute. Yeah. Let's sneak over and hear what they're talking about. Every little bit helps. Hey, Richard, has Mr. Benny got a nice house? He certainly has. But you know, Gerard, I think we're paying as much here as we would at a hotel. <laughs> hmm. Why, Jack Benny, so that's why you put that sign out from Beverly Hills Tourist Haven. <laughs> I just did that for a gag. Well... Hello, Gerard. Richard? Hello, Mr. Benny. Are you still worrying about next Wednesday night? No, no, no. I, I've been studying like a little demon, and I expect to be very good on your program. I hope so, Mr. Benny. We like you. We sure do. Well, that's good. You know, kid, I didn't intend to bring this up, but when I was a child, your age... Uh-oh. Mary. <laughs> I, had a, I had a stand on the street corner selling newspapers when I should have been in school. I mean, what chance did I have to study? Well, why didn't you read the newspapers? <laughs> my, my eyes were bad. <laughs> I tell you, kid, I used to stand there on the street corner barefooted. Get your paper here, I'd say. Extra. Extra. Dewey, take vanilla. <laughs> oh, stop. Anyway, kid, if I miss on some of the questions Wednesday night, you miss some of them too, will you? But, Mr. Benny, we don't know what the questions are until they ask us. I know, but, Richard, whatever they do ask you, miss a few, just, just as a favor to me. That wouldn't be ethical. <laughs> ethical, smethical, that's all I hear. <laughs> How would you kids like it if I raised your rent? 
Now, look, fellas, I don't like to get tough. But hey, listen. Jack, look who's coming. Oh, yeah. Pardon me, kids. Uh, good evening, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Playing with the kitties, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we're having a lot of fun. They're adorable little rascals. Very brilliant, too. Yes, I know. I asked one of them to look at my watch this morning, and he told me the exact time. Your watch? Well, what's so difficult about that? The hands have mittens on them. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. Well, look, Mr. Billingsley, if the hands are covered, how do you tell time? Oh, I always go by the stars. You can't miss that way. The stars? Well, that's a good system at night, but, uh... What do you do during the day? I'm a bus boy at the Brown Derby. <laughs> oh, hmm. Well, I can see we're not getting any place, so let's discuss this later. Shall we, Mr. Billy, please? Yes. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Oh, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> I can't understand that guy. <laughs> now, kids, getting back to hey, the... Claude, get it ready. Okay, Rochester, go get Claude. Come on, Mary. Come on, Richard, Gerard. Oh, boy, food. Gee, I'm hungry. Well, we've got a nice dinner prepared for you. Roast, duck, and everything. You know, kids, there was one thing I forgot to tell you about my childhood. You know, there was a public library in my hometown, but you had to climb three flights of steps to get there. And I was so weak and frail that as much as I wanted an education... <laughs> Gee, I'm full. Well, kids, didn't Uncle Jackie give you a nice dinner tonight? Yes, Mr. Benny. I'm glad you liked it. I certainly enjoyed that Merle of Clark. Oh, it was sent. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Marilla Calaris. Uh, what's that, Gerard? That's the Latin word for duck. Oh, oh, the roast duck. The Latin word. Yes, it was delicious. I thought the massive potatoes were a little too lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, don't be funny. Well, kids, Uncle Jackie's pretty tired from studying all day, so if you don't mind, I think I'll go up to bed. See you in the morning, everybody. Oh, Mr. Benny, do you want me to tell your story again tonight? No. <laughs> no, no, thank you, Richard, thank you. I'll fall asleep all right. Well, good night, kids. Good night, good night Mr. Benny. Benny. Good night, Mary. Good night, Jack, and for heaven's sake, stop worrying. I'm not worried. <laughs> Say, Rochester, go upstairs and turn down my bed, will you? Okay, boss. I'll answer the door. Marilla Calera. Amazing how that little child knew that. Huh? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Say, mister, my wife and I'd like to rent a room. A room? Yes, we were driving by and saw your sign. We're on our honeymoon. Oh, that sign, Beverly Hills Tourist Haven. Well, I, I just put that up for a gag. I really have no room for rent. Show them the license, Homer. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 I, uh, <laughs> no, I really haven't any vacancies, I'm sorry. Okay, come on, Sam. <laughs> Sam, that must be short for bland. <laughs> well, I might as well hit the hay. Now, let's see, physiotherapy is the Latin word for duck. No, that's not it. Oh, well, I'll probably think of it in the morning. Well, good night, Rochester. Tomorrow's Sunday, and it's my busy day, so wake me up early, will you? Yes, sir. Boy, am I tired. It's been a tough day for me, all right. Jeez, that feels good. I wonder if I ought to look now and see whose picture is on a $20 bill. <laughs> Now, you know, I'll, I'll wait till morning. You better take your clothes off, boss. You're liable to fall asleep that way. I'll just rest for a few minutes and take them off later. Good night, Rochester. Good night, boss. I left your chin strap on the dresser. Thanks. Oh, boy, am I all in. Questions, answers. I don't know why I ever got into this mess. Taj Mahal. Imagine it took 22 men, 20,000 years to build it. No, that can't be it. Must have been 20,000 men. 
Okay, get over there, little kid. No, you want to Physiotherapy. I never saw kids with so much. Here they are, the Quiz Kids, presented every Wednesday night by the makers of Alka Seltzer. Hey, look at all those people. Well, I just have to do the best I can. I will now call the roll. Jackie? I am Jackie Benny. I am nine years old, and I attend the Taj Mahal School in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I'm ready, sir. William? I am William Shakespeare. I am seven years old, and I go to the King Lear School in Hamlet, Indiana. Shakespeare? Gee, you ought to know all about Shakespeare. What chance have I got? Isaac? I am Sir Isaac Newton. I am four years old, and I discovered the law of gravity. <laughs> That's gravity. Hey, mister, Phil got that wrong. I mean, Sir Isaac. Gee, she looked like Phil. And now, lady? I am Lady Godiva. Lady Godiva? I am 12 years old, and I'm riding the Bay Meadow. <laughs> Oh, boy. I pity the horse. Well, let's get going with the questions. Did Uncle Jackie give you a nice dinner tonight? Yes, Mr. Benny. 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 The score is now Quiz Kids 1492, Benny Nothing. Hey. I better get going here. Now, William Shakespeare. Yes, sir. And it's the quotation, to be or not to be. Hey, I know that one, but I haven't any vacant room. Show them the life and Palmer. To be or not to be. To be or not to be, that is the question. Hey, mister, ask me something. I know lots of answers. All right, Jack Benny. Here's a question for you. <laughs> hey, if you had a farm of 22,000 acres, and on this farm you planted library steps, Library? Yes. And each of these farmers had three sons, but the fifth son could only work every eighth day. And the seventh... Wait a minute. Wait a, wait a minute. Now, here's the question. How wide is the river? <laughs> what? <laughs> what river? The Taj Mahal. <laughs> the Taj Mahal? What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Who are you? I am the gas man. <laughs> I am 32 years old, and I'm wearing a white fur coat. Oh, my goodness, he's inside a car, Michael. Correct. One point for Rock, yes, the man Jones. You keep out of it. Come on, Jackie, are you going to answer the question or not? How wide is the river? <laughs> Let's see. 22,000 acres of library set. I've got to find the prime factor in the least common multiple. Well, do you know the answer or not? Give me a chance, will you? Let him have it. Chief will beat it out of him. I'll get it. I'll get it. You better get it or you'll get the electric chair. The electric chair? No, no, I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't do it. The electric chair? <laughs> Mary, what are you laughing at? Who discovered electricity? Benjamin Franklin, but I'm sorry. Hey, mister, I've got the answer. The river is... Take it easy, Sam. <laughs> I know. I know the width of that river. The river is... He doesn't know. 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 Mouth face. Mouth face. I know it. Mouth face. Please, fellas, give me a chance. Knock him down, man. Oh, with his head. Let me out of here. Let me out of the chair. I know the answer. The river is... Oh, oh, wake up. The river is 300 and... Oh, what's the matter with you? Wake up. Watch it to get away from me. I've got the answer. Oh, wake up. You can't it. The river is... What? You've had a nightmare, boss. Wake up. A nightmare? Oh. Well, gee whiz. Wow, what I just been through. You know, Rochester, I just dreamt I was in the quiz kit program, and I didn't know the answer. Did you have to dream that? <laughs> Thank heaven it was only a dream. Hand me that tin strap, Rochester. I want to look nice for my new picture. Here you are. Good night, boss. Good night, Rochester.
will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Now I want to take this opportunity to thank Lewis Cowan and the Quiz Kids for their splendid cooperation on tonight's program. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> No, no, Mary, I've made up my mind. I am not going into that studio and broadcast tonight. Oh, Jack, let's not stand out here in the hall arguing. Everybody's looking at us. Let them look. If you think I can do a show tonight after making a monkey out of myself on that Quiz Kids program, you're crazy. That was Wednesday. People have forgotten all about it. Oh, they have, eh? And besides, you're a comedian. You're not supposed to have any brains. <laughs> oh, you're just trying to make me feel good. There I was with those little kids, and I, I couldn't answer one question. And me, 34 years old. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't even answer a simple question like, where's the Taj Mahal? You could have built the Taj Mahal since you were 34. <laughs> Go ahead, rub it in. What a blunder. After all the years I spent in show business, I had to stick my neck out and ruin everything. Oh, well, that's life for you. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. May I have your autograph? You don't want my autograph, girly. I'm washed up. <laughs> Thanks, just the same. Oh, Jack, you have to dramatize everything. I do, eh? Supposing you did miss on a few questions. You're not supposed to be Einstein. I'm not supposed to be Phil Harris, either. <laughs> my goodness. My... My cousin Boo Boo would have been as good as I was on that program, and all he knows is. I tell you, I tell you, Mary, I'm not going on the air tonight. Oh, for heaven's sake! If you're so ashamed of yourself, why don't you go out and join the Foreign Legion? You might think that's a gag, Mary, but the Foreign Legion isn't such a bad idea. You can't get over it. Imagine not getting that one question about the Taj Mahal. I knew the answer, but I opened my mouth and nothing came out. Not only that, a fly came in. <laughs> oh, well. Nothing I can do about it now. Jack! Jack, hurry up. The program starts in 30 seconds. Well, I won't be on it. Now, Jack Benny, stop acting like a big baby. He'll be right in, Don. Mary, I'm not going... Stop pulling me! Mary, let go of my arm. Come on, Jack. Remember, you're a trooper. A what? Oh, yes, that's right. Once a trooper, always a trooper. The show must go on. Quiet, Jack. We're on the air. Okay. Gee, I hope I'm good tonight. The Jello Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we bring you one of the most brilliant minds in America today. A man whose meek and humble appearance conceals the brain of a genius. A man who appeared on the Quiz Kids program Wednesday night and didn't know the Taj Mahal from the Empire State Building, Jack Benny. Thank you. Uh, Jalo again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I can't blame you for ribbing me tonight. Those Quiz Kids really gave me the old one, too. I was never so humiliated in my life. Well, I wouldn't take it so hard. After all, Jack, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, it isn't, eh? Well, let me tell you something, Don. Everybody's snubbing me. I met Barney Dean on the street the other day, and he wouldn't even speak to me. Barney Dean? Who's he? Just throw a cigar away in front of the Regent Hotel. You'll find out. <laughs> I can't understand it. We've always been such good friends. Well, that's the way it goes. But I'm not complaining, Don. I had it coming to me after that showing I made Wednesday night. I can take it, though. You can take it? Yes. Then why did you try to hang yourself Thursday morning? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, I was hanging up a little laundry. I fell off the ladder and got tangled in the clothesline. That's all. Then explain that note you left. Farewell, cool world. <laughs> oh, that must have fallen out of my scrapbook. That's a note I wrote one time when Clara Bow wouldn't go out with me. <laughs> She got mad because my garter got caught in her wristwatch during a Charleston contest. <laughs> we, we were disqualified. Anyway, Don, when Mary saw me, I was just hanging up a few socks. On Thursday? I thought you always did your washing on Monday. I couldn't do it Monday. I gave a reception for Lady Mendel. What do you want me to do, ask her to run the ringer? 
He came over to my house to meet the quiz kid. Then why didn't you do your laundry Tuesday? You know darn well that Tuesday is my day to go out and catch dogs in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I was elected to the office, and it's my duty. Now, oh. oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Say, I heard you on the quiz kid program last week. Oh, did you? Yeah, you sure were smart. Smart? I didn't even open my mouth. That's what I mean. Don't talk, brother, unless you've got a lawyer with you. <laughs> You're a little mixed up, Dennis, but thanks anyway. You know, Mr. Benny, when I was eight years old, I was just as bright as any one of those quiz kids. You were? Yeah. What happened to me? <laughs> I'm sure I don't know. Some say one thing and some say another. <laughs> well, don't... Don't worry about it. You've got a... Don't worry about it, Dennis. You've got a good voice. What more do you want? You know, Don, as a rule, I'm pretty hard-boiled, but even though those quiz kids made me look like a nickel, I can't help liking them. They're, they're so sweet and unspoiled. By the way, Jack, are they still living at your house? Uh, yes, Don, but they're leaving tonight. They better check out before 6 o'clock or they'll be hooked for another day. <laughs> Listen, Mary, at a lot of hotels, the guests have to cut, uh, to, to be out by noon. So don't run down to Beverly Hills Tourist Haven. <laughs> Rotary Club every Wednesday. I thought the campfire girls met on Wednesday. <laughs> Only in the winter. <laughs> but honestly, fellas, those kids really made a hit with me. Gosh, they were wonderful company. I may be a bit sentimental, but I don't know. I'm going to miss the patter of little feet running around the house. It'll be so quiet. Why don't you put shoes on the mic? <laughs> no, stop. No, he's being sentimental around here. Say, Dennis. Yes, please? As long as Phil isn't here yet, how about your song? What's it going to be? I'm going to sing a brand new number called Once Upon a Summertime. And this is the first time it's ever been done on the air. Well, a newie, eh? Yeah? Let's hear it, Dennis. Okay. Hold it a minute. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Wait a minute, buddy. Here's a dime for you. Oh, goody. Now I get my curls out of hock. <laughs> so all that zombie needs is curls. Say, Jack, uh, this wire's from Waukegan. Oh, from home, eh? Yeah, it says, uh, you certainly disgrace the family on the Quiz Kids program. Personally, I'm disgusted with you. Disgusted with me? Who's that from? Cousin Boo Boo. <laughs> Well, how did Boo Boo ever find out about telegrams? He must have seen the picture, Western Union. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> that, uh, that was Once Upon a Summertime, written by Jack Brooks and Norman Barons and sung by Dennis Day. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hiya, Mary. Hello, Phil. Say, Phil, how are you and the boys going over to the Paramount Theater? Mary, we're a riot. You ought to hear the laugh I get with my gag. I can imagine. Get this one, Jackson. When I first walk out on the stage, I say to my guitar player, I say, uh, Hey, Frankie, who was that lady I seen you with last night? Uh-huh. And before he can answer, I hit him right in that kisser with a blueberry pie. <laughs> hmm. Why, Phil Harris, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Throwing a pie in a guy's face is the oldest comedy bit in show business. With blueberries! You think of a cluster! <laughs> Oh, I see. You you modernized it, huh? You know, I can't imagine people laughing at that kind of stuff nowadays. Neither can I. Oh, you can't, eh? Why, after the first show, the manager came backstage and told me I was terrific. He said, uh, Harris, you ought to have your own radio program. He did, eh? Yeah, but don't worry, Jackson. I'm loyal. I'm with you for years. Well, thanks. Now, if I was loyal, you'd be all set. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Phil. I used to be in vaudeville, but I never stooped so low as to throw a pie at anybody. That's real hokum. What about that corny piece of business you used to do in your violin act? Corny piece of business? What was it, Mary? <laughs> Jack used to play by the waters of the Minnetonka, and for a finish, Barney Dean would squirt him in the face with a bottle of seltzer. <laughs> yeah, now the guy won't even speak to me. But, Mary, that was a very clever tie-in. You see, the song I was playing was about water. So Barney Dean squirted seltzer water on me. 
That was the idea. Uh, remember the time he played Among My Souvenirs and he took your watch? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was just for a gag. I got it back later. Anyway, I'll never forget one day. When Bo- Come in. Hello, Hello boss. boss. Oh, hello, Rochester. I got the quiz kids out in the car. They're all ready to go to the station. Already? I didn't know it was that late. Say, Phil, the kids are going back to Chicago tonight, and I promise to take them down to the train. So you carry on with the show, will you? Okay. Hey, Frankie, go out and get a blueberry pie. <laughs> you don't have to do that here. Just play some numbers. Come on, Mary, you ride down with us. So long, Phil. See you later, Dennis. So long, Mr. Buddy. The kids are in the car, eh, Rochester? Yes, sir. And, boss, listening to those kids talk is really an education. It certainly is. You know, I told them the salary you were paying me, and they took my weekly earnings, multiplied by 52, and gave me the square root of my annual income. <laughs> the uh, square root, eh? What was it? Believe me, boss, it ain't worth rooting. <laughs> That's too bad. Now, listen, Rocky. Oh, there you are, Mr. Benny. Yes? I've got your papers ready to sign. You leave in ten days. What? Oh, I meant to get in touch with you about that. I'm, I'm not going. Well, it's pretty late for that, Mr. Benny. I'm sorry. You have to forget the whole thing. Come on, Mary. Got it? I meant to write him a letter. Who is that, Dad? The recruiting officer for the Foreign Legion. <laughs> you know how depressed I was. It's all off now, though. I'm sure disappointed, boys. I got a gal in Morocco. Well, you weren't going. Well, there are the kids. Come on, Mary. Okay, Bo Jeff. Hello, kids. Here's Uncle Jackie to take you to the train. Now, I'll sit up and front with Rochester. And, Mary, you get back there with the kids. Move over, Gerard. <laughs> No, Rochester, I don't like that horn. It sounds too cheap and tinny. Oh. That didn't come with the car. Where do we get that horn, Rochester? There ain't no horn. It's an old atomizer. An atomizer? Yeah, don't you smell that? It's your little boy every time I squeeze it. Well, that's one on me. An atomizer for a horn. That's nothing. Our spare tire is a life preserver from the Albany night boat. <laughs> Oh, yes, I fell overboard one night. It's lucky I had that on. Everything comfortable in the back seat, kids? Yes, yes Mr. Benny. Benny. It's fine. Yeah, fine. Good, good. You know, Uncle Jackie is going to miss you, little rascals. But you certainly had me on the ropes last Wednesday night. We sure did. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you still feel like hanging yourself, Mr. Benny? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm all right now. But you kids certainly made a monkey out of me. Gosh. I didn't know anything. Cousin Boo Boo is sick about it. <laughs> Never mind. Well, Claude, are, are you going to miss California? I certainly am, Mr. Benny. I believe that Horace Greeley put it very succinctly when he said, Go west, young man. Oh, he did. He put it very... Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, uh... <laughs> Horace Greeley was a great inventor. Why, Mr. Benny, Horace Greeley wasn't an inventor. Hmm. He was a newspaper editor. Oh, he was, eh? Well, if you're so smart, what paper? The New York Tribune from 1841 to 1872. Hmm. I'd give a thousand dollars if I could learn to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Anyway, I wouldn't be surprised if Horace Greeley did invent something. As Dynamiki, you will know. All right, Gerard. 1841, I'll check on that. Hey, boss, there's Mr. Wilson walking down the street. Oh, yes, pull up alongside him. Okay. Well, John, John, would you like to ride down to the station with us? I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> okay, okay, keep going, Rochester. Poor guy, his tongue is still twisted. Well, Richard, you're rather quiet back there. Did you enjoy your visit with Uncle Jackie? Yes, Mr. Benny, but I'm sure sorry I didn't get to see Carmichael. Oh, oh, yes, I was quite anxious to see your polar bear, too. Me, too. Well, kid, you certainly missed a treat. Carmichael is just about the cutest thing you ever saw. Soft, white, silky fur, loves to play, and he's just as gentle as a lamb. <laughs> 
Then what happened to the gas man? <laughs> You just drive the car. And watch it. So watch out. Watch out for that bump up ahead. The what? That bump. Oh, hang on, everybody. Watch it. So will you please watch where you're driving? You're at the wheel now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Get over here. Mary, are the kids all right? You better call the roll. Okay. Claude? Here. Richard? Here. Gerard? I'm Gerard Gell. I'm eight years old and I go to the Bradville School. Don't give your billing. Just an answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank heaven the kids are all right. Be careful now, Rochester. Yes, sir. Still don't like that horn. Why don't you get something unusual? Something that sounds different. Why don't you get your cousin Boo Boo to go... <laughs> Just keep my relatives out of this, will you? Well, kid, it won't be long now before you'll be on that choo-choo. Choo-choo? What's that? Oh, that's baby talk for locomotive. <laughs> baby talk, eh? Hmm. I said choo-choo till I was 29 years old. Hmm. You didn't stop drooling till you were 30. <laughs> Oh, quiet. Hey, Rocket, you were near the station, are we? Pretty soon, boss. Oh, Gerard, I think we ought to straighten things out with Mr. Benny now, don't you? Let Richard do it. Do what? What is it, Richard? Well, Mr. Benny, we've been living at your house, and we haven't paid our bill yet. Your bill? Oh, forget it, kids. I, <laughs> I, I don't want your money. But, Mr. Benny, we ought to pay you. We lived at your house two weeks. Two weeks in a day. <laughs> but forget <we're> it. <laughs> Get it, kids. <laughs> it's all right with me. I enjoyed having you. Really. Then, Mr. Benny, if we went to a hotel, it would have cost us money, so why shouldn't you get it? Yeah. Why? Oh, forget <laughs> it. Forget it. You kids were my guests. Let it go at that. But, Mr. Benny. Watch out, Claude. This can't last forever. <laughs> Mary, you know very well I wouldn't accept any rent from these lovable children. But. When they get to Chicago and they feel like sending me a little gift, well, that's <laughs> entirely up to them. <laughs> well, kids, here we are at the station. Pull up by the entrance, Rochester. Oh, well, we haven't got much time. Pile out, kids. Come on. 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 Watch it there. Take it easy. Say, boss, you I put my red cap on and take the bags in? <laughs> so loud. There are a lot of them standing around. Come on, kids. Come on, Mary. This way, kids. You've got time to make the train. Oh, look. There's Mr. Kelly, our quiz master. Yes, and there are the other kids. And there's Aunt Bessie. Wait for us, Gerard. Don't run ahead. Everybody stick together. Come on. Come on. as Mr. Benny puts it. Gee, he's a nice man. And he didn't even charge us for those two weeks. He certainly for me. <laughs> Ready to go, boss? Yeah. Gee, I hated to see those kids leave. You know, Mary, you got to be just like my own children. No kidding, I, I was crazy about him. Oh, stop blubbering. You'll see him again. Yes, but I was so used to playing with him and everything. I mean, what'll I do now? I mean, what'll I do when I come home evening? What, what'll I do in my spare time? Let's look for the gas thing. Oh, quiet! Come on, let's go. Oh, we're a little late. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, as there are only five more weeks left in the current Jello series, at this time I would like to pay tribute to a man who, for the past 30 weeks, has brought joy and happiness into millions of American homes. Well, what's this? A man whose wit, charm, and personality have endeared him to the hearts of his public. Something fishy going on here. A man who every year at this time renews the contracts of myself and the other members of the Jell-O cast. Oh, Jack Benny! <laughs> oh, so that's it. Jell-O again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I was wise the minute you opened your big fat mouth. <laughs> there are only two times a year when I hear that malarkey. Christmas time and option time. Well, Don, I suppose you've looked over the contract I mailed you for next season and you're all ready to sign it. On the contrary, Jack, I'm not quite satisfied with some of the clauses in it. What? Yes, Jack, I discussed the matter at home and the little woman doesn't think uh, my increase in salary is quite big enough. Oh, she doesn't. But, Don, when I spoke to you on the phone, you seemed quite happy about everything. I know, Jack, but after talking it over with the little woman, I feel that you're taking advantage of me. Oh, you feel, huh? Well, Don, let me ask you something. Uh, who does the announcing on this program, you or the little woman? You can expect her any week now. Oh, fine. Now, Don, before the others get here, exactly what kind of a raise do you think I ought to give you next season? Well, here's the situation, Jack. You've been getting a lot of laughs at the expense of my being fat. Uh-huh. And this year, my weekly salary has been at the rate of $2 a pound. Oh. So I think it's only fair that next year I ought to get $3 a pound. Three bucks a pound, eh? Don, I can get blue ribbon, grade A, Kansas City beef cheaper than that. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the, the raise I offered you is as high as I can go. Now, what do you say? Well, I can't decide right now, Jack. I'll have to talk it over with the little woman. Oh, you and the little woman. Haven't you got a mind of your own? Yes, but I respect my wife's opinion, and I'm very devoted to her. Oh, you are. After all, I'm home with her every day except Sunday. Well, I can fix that, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Don, I've been very fair about this whole thing. And I think that... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you talking about? Oh, Don isn't satisfied with his new contract for next season. He isn't? No. Oh, my goodness. After all you've done for him... Well, that's the way it goes, Mary. There isn't much gratitude in this business. Why, Don Wilson, you ought to be... Never mind, Mary. Thanks, just the same. By the way, have you read your new contract? Yeah. What are you trying to do, bring back slavery? <laughs> oh, so I'm going to have trouble with you, too. What's the matter with your contract? Well, I'm getting paid to rehearse on Saturday and do this program on Sunday. Well? But if you think I'm going to mend your socks the rest of the week, you're crazy. Well, you're getting paid on the basis of a full week. Anyway, I can't mend my own socks. I don't know anything about sewing. You don't know anything about sewing? No, I don't. I hate to race you making a soup, brother. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. I maybe made a half a dozen suits when Vaudeville started to slip. <laughs> And that was so long ago, I've forgotten all about it. Go on, you could thread a needle with your toes. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? I was never a real tailor, so forget about it. Say, Don. Sleeve 32. Sleeve 32. <laughs> now cut that out. <laughs> Listen, Mary, I want you to stop kidding about me being a tailor. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of, Jack. If you made that suit you're wearing now, you're an excellent craftsman. Uh, this suit? Oh, it's a lovely fit, Don, but I didn't make it. A fellow named Marino makes all my clothes. Marino? Yes, you ought to try him sometime. Right? Hiya, Jackson. Boy, are you lucky I made the broadcast tonight. Oh, hello, Phil. Well, that audience wouldn't let me off the stage at the Paramount. Oh, you're still there, eh? Say, Phil, are you doing the same gags you did last week? No, oh, Mary, everything new, all fresh material. I can imagine. No kidding, Jackson. You remember that bit last week we did where my guitar player pulls a gag and I hit him in the face with a blueberry pie? Yeah. This week's strawberry shortcake. <laughs> well, that's a switch. It's a little more subtle, Phil, but I imagine the audience gets it, huh? So you hit Frankie with a with a strawberry shortcake, eh? Yeah, but I had to take out the strawberries. He's allergic to them. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Allergical? Yeah, you know, he breaks out in a rat all the time. <laughs> Phil, you only came in here two minutes ago, and you've already set this program back 50 years. <laughs> Now, before, uh, before we go back another generation, how about playing a number? Okay, Jackson. What would you like to hear? Glenn Miller, but I'm stuck with you. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Now, go ahead. Play anything. Hold it. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Wait a minute, bud. Here's a dime for you. Oh, darn it. Now I have to sew up that hole in my pocket. I'd love to have his head for my rock garden. (laughs) Who's, uh... (laughs) Who's, uh... Who's the wire? Who's the wire from, Mary? Oh, look, Jack, it's from Dennis Day. From Dennis? Yeah, it says, I'm out in the hall, we'll be in soon. Regards. <laughs> well, isn't he a thoughtful little dodo? <laughs> Play, Phil. <laughs> uh, that was uh, Wouldn't You Like to Know, <laughs> played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature... Hey, Jackson, are you in a good mood tonight? Why? What's on your mind, Phil? Well, I want to talk to you about that new contract you sent me. My lawyers don't like it. Your lawyers? Who are they? McDermott, McMillan, McFadden, and Fink. (laughs) It's a nice firm. Well, Phil, just uh, what is it your lawyers object to in the contract? Well, they don't like that clause that says I've got to get to bed Saturday nights before 3 a.m. Well, it's for your own good, Phil. After all, we got a program to do on Sunday, and I want you to look bright and fresh. I know, but if I lose those bags under my eyes, I ain't got no character. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry, Phil, but that clause stands. You'll have to be in bed by 3 a.m. Okay, okay, but you won't be able to call me Twitch no more. (laughs) I'll just have to take that chance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce, for our feature attraction this evening, the Benny, if you like us, tell your friends, even though you lose them, players, (laughs) will present an original detective thriller entitled Murder at the Movies or No Croaking on the Main Floor. (laughs) Now, in this gripping drama, Don Wilson will be sergeant of police and I will be the captain. We knew that. You always have to have the star part. Well... Yeah, Jack, why can't I be the captain? Because you're too... Soft, Don, too sympathetic. Well, you gotta be a tough and callous and, and hard boiled like I am. Look who's hard boiled. When the quiz kids left town last week, you cried like a baby. Well, I did feel pretty bad at the station, especially when little Gerard put his arms around my neck and kissed me. <laughs> that, that really made me cry. Well, I didn't mind that, but when you got down on your knee and sang a chorus of Sunny Boy, I could have kicked you. <laughs> As if you didn't, sister. <laughs> anyway, getting back to our play, I'm going to be the captain. Now, let's see. Hello, Mr. Benny. Uh, did you get my telegram? Yes, but what a silly thing to do, Dennis. We're only out in the hall. Why send a telegram? Why, am I too young? <laughs> no, but a telegram. You were right outside here. Why didn't you open the door and yell in? That's old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? You're the kind of a guy that said the automobile wouldn't be practical. What? You better wake up, bub. <laughs> what the heck are you talking about? It's the silliest thing. Now, settle down. And as long as you're here, kid, we're casting our play. We're doing murder at the movies, and you're going to be the ticket taker. You mean the guy that takes tickets? No, the guy that shovels coal in the basement. <laughs> the guy that takes tickets. And, Mary, you're going to be the girl in the box office, the one that sells tickets. Okay, give me a stick of gum and let's get going. Here you are. Here's your penny. Thanks. <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> now, this play, ladies and gentlemen, will go on immediately after a song by our young tenor. Are you ready, Dennis? Yes, sir. Say, Dennis, I like that new suit you're wearing. Who made it for you? Marino and Benny. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, Dennis, go ahead with your song. Why, Jack Benny, I thought you weren't making suits anymore. Marino makes them. I'm just the outside man. That's all. Now, go ahead, Dennis. I'll tell you. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. All right, Rochester, what do you want? I've been listening to the Pratt program, boss, and it occurred to me that we haven't discussed my contract yet. Well, Rochester, you've been working in my house now for four years, and I feel there's no necessity for a written contract. Uh-huh. Everything is perfectly clear, and we have what is known as a verbal agreement. Uh-huh. That means we have a mutual understanding. Why put it on paper? The amount of money involved is too small. That's what I mean. Let's get it up. <laughs> Never mind. Now, believe me, Rochester, there's no necessity for a written contract. But my attorneys advised it, whereas, hand to whip. Your attorneys, who are they? Sambo, Tambo, Sugarfoot, and Smythe. <laughs> oh. Well, tell Sambo, Tambo, Sugarfoot, and Smythe to get in touch with McDermott, McMillan, McFadden, and Fink. Let them handle it. That's the same firm. They got a branch on Central Avenue. <laughs> Well, anyway, Rochester, you've got nothing to worry about. I'm giving you, I'm giving you a substantial raise next year. Substantial? Yes. You know what the word means, don't you? I ain't illiterate. I'm skeptical. <laughs> well, you'll get it, so don't let it bother you. Now, we got a play to do. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? In this play tonight, you're going to be a detective, ain't you? Yes. Does that mean you're going to solve a murder? Yes, it does. Well, when you clear that up, find out what happened to the gas man. <laughs> Forget about the gas man. Goodbye. Gas man, gas man. Carmichael didn't touch him. He's as gentle as a lamb. Sing that. That was Amapola, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, I can't get over how you're improving every week. Tonight, your voice was like a breath of spring. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our play, Murder at the Movies, or He Took the Count at the Paramount. <laughs> now, the scene opened. The Paramount? Am I the guy that's going to be killed? Phil, if you've been there two weeks and no one has taken a shot at you yet, you're safe. <laughs> now, the scene opens at police headquarters, where Captain Benny is seated at his desk. Is seated at his desk. <laughs> Curtain. <laughs> Music. <laughs> Listen, Wilson, things are going from bad to worse. The chief just phoned, said we better clean up the crooks in this district or else. Oh, we're doing all right. Doing all right. You were on duty in Westlake Park last night. You let somebody steal a canoe. Well, what are you worried about, Cap? I was in it with my girl. <laughs> and another thing, you're a fine-looking policeman. Where's your badge? Down here. My suspenders broke. <laughs> well, put it back where it belongs. They'll fall down. Let them fall. <laughs> Now, listen, Wilson, I want action around here. Action. I'm going to fill this jail if I have to put in jukeboxes. <laughs> That's what. I'll take it. Hello, police headquarters. Captain Benny speaking. Hello, this is Mamie Livingston, cashier at the Paramount Theater. Oh, hello, Mamie. How trick? Fine, she just had pups. <laughs> I don't mean that. What'd you call me up for? Better get over here right away, Cap. A fellow was murdered right in front of my box office. He was cute. Murdered, eh? How do you know he's dead? He doesn't wink back. <laughs> I see. Well, tell me, when did this murder happen? About three hours ago. Three hours ago? Why didn't you call me then? I was reading a movie magazine. Oh. Is there a picture of me in it? Yes, and you look worse than the guy that's laying here. <laughs> I doubt that. But hold everything, Mamie. We'll be right over. Come on, Sarge. The murder's been committed in front of the Paramount. Let's go. Okay, the squad car's right out in front. Good. Pull up your pants. Yes, sir. <laughs> you drive, Wilson, and we'll find the murderer, or my name ain't... Marino and Benny. That is all. Hmm. Forgot to mention those.
those easy payments. Step on it, Sarge. Here's a tater, Wilson. Look at that marquee. Bing Crossy and Bob Hope on the road to Zanzibar, and Phil Harris on the road to Annie Bar. <laughs> all right, all right, break it up. Stand back, everybody. There's the party, Cap. Guy's dead, all right. Yeah. Get a load of that suit he's wearing. Tailoring is awful. That sleeve isn't hand stitched. It was done with a machine. I wonder who made it, Cap. I'll find out. Let's see the label. Well, I'll be darned. Who made it? McDermott, McMillan, McFadden, and Fink. <laughs> Lawsuits and clothes. <laughs> I was wondering what Fink was doing there. <laughs> Well, there's Mamie in the box office. I'll see what she knows about this crime. Hello, Mamie. Hello, Cap. I'm glad you got here. Now, tell me, Mamie, how was this man murdered? He was shot through the little finger. Little finger? How could that kill him? He was scratching his head at the time. <laughs> well, you're a witness, Mamie. Tell me exactly what happened. Well, Cap, I was sitting here selling tickets when all of a sudden... How many, please? One in the balcony. If you got a man with you, I'm going to hold him. Come on, mister. <laughs> All right, Mamie, let's get going. I want the facts about this crime. Well, Cap, I was sitting here selling tickets when all of a sudden I heard a shot. Yes, yes. So I looked around at... How many, please? The six. I want to lie down. <laughs> all right, Mamie, a shot was fired. You looked around and what happened? Where did the murderer go? He bought a ticket and went inside. That's all I want to know. Come on, Sarge. We'll go in and get that killer. Right behind you, Cap. Oh, no, you're not. Lead the way. <laughs> There's the doorman. Hey, buddy, did a man come in here a few minutes ago with a gun in his hand? Yes, sir, he did. Was the gun smoking? Yes, sir, I made him sit in the lodger. <laughs> you hear that? Come on, Wilson. Okay. And pull up your pants. Let's go inside. I'm sorry, mister, but you fellas will have to have tickets. <laughs> tickets? We're the police and we're after a criminal. Here, look at our badges. They're very pretty, but you've got to have tickets. <laughs> Oh, all right. Hey, Wilson, buy two tickets. Okay, Cap. Now, see here, buddy. You have no right to hold this up. I'm Captain Bennett. Got a good mind to give you a belt in the back. That's what I told Marino, but he wouldn't put one on. <laughs> well, he is stubborn. Now, look. I've got the tickets, Cap. Okay. Here you are, buddy. Hold your stubs, please. Off of your pants, Wilson. Now, come on. The murderer must be upstairs. Follow me. Okay, here are the loaders. Now, let's take it easy. We might corner them. Dubs, please. Oh, here you are. I'm sorry, sir, but these tickets are for the main floor. Now, look here, buddy. Where's the law? We're after a desperate criminal, and he's sitting in the loaders. Well, if he can afford it, can't you? <laughs> oh, all right. What do we owe you? There will be 30 cents extra for two tickets. Here you are. Take a note of that, Wilson. Now, come on. We've got to find the murderer. <laughs> Look, the stage show is starting. Oh, yes, Mayor Phil Harris making his entrance. Hiya, folks. Make me know you're glad to see me. <laughs> hmm. Get you to do some of those corny gags now. Come on, Cap. We've got to find that murderer. You look around. I want to stay here a minute. Okay. You know, folks, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the theater. I stopped in a restaurant and said to the waiter, Do you have frog legs? And he says, No, nah, I always walk this way. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Listen to him laugh at that. Ain't that stuff terrible? How does he get away with it? You got me, mister. Anyway, folks, when I got through with the frog legs, I wanted some coffee. So I said to the waiter, Give me a cup of coffee half and half. So he brought in half and a cup and half and a saucer. <laughs> oh, brother. Isn't that awful? It sure is, buddy. And now, folks, we're going to play a little number entitled Papa, Get the Hammer. There's a fly on Baby's Head. Holy smoke! <laughs> Hit it, boys! <laughs> I can't get over those gags. I wonder where Harris gets them. I know where he used to get them, but he ain't going to get them no more. 
What do you mean? I just bumped off the guy that wrote that stuff. What? Yeah, he's laying out in front of the theater right now. Oh, so you're the murderer. Well, I'm from police headquarters. I'm sorry, but I'll have to arrest you. Okay, Cap, let's go. Not right now. I want to stay here and listen to the rest of Harris's act. Well, I can't stand this anymore. I'm going over to jail and wait for you. <laughs> okay, just tell them who you are and they'll let you in. Thanks. So long, Cap. So long, and you got nothing to worry about, mister. There ain't a jury in the world that'll convict you. See you in jail. <laughs> We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride and pleasure that I present to you a man who next Friday, May the 9th, celebrates his 10th anniversary in radio, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. My goodness. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, Jalo again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I can see the whole part of it. My goodness. Uh, gosh, fellas, I'm really getting a send off here. It's a wonderful tribute. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your thoughtful introduction. You know, I'd almost forgotten about my 10th anniversary. But I... <laughs> now, Phil, don't overdo it, you little rascal. <laughs> Gosh, this reception has made me all choked up here. Look, my big blue eyes are full of tears. Have you got a handkerchief, Mary? No, here's a blotter. <laughs> Never mind, I'll leave the tears in my eyes. It makes me look like Betty Davis. <laughs> but no kidding, fellas, all this fuss and everything about my radio birthday is more than I expected. Really, I don't deserve it. Ah, yes, you do, Jackson. Why, certainly. You're a pioneer in radio, and you're worthy of this recognition. That's right, Jack. You've got it coming to you. Well... Thanks again, fellas, but I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, gosh, I don't know what to say. I feel like a fool. Look, I'm blushing. Hooray, you've got blood. <laughs> well, I'm just excited, that's all. Naturally, I'm, I'm flustered. Well, that's perfectly natural, Jack. After all, we're making great big fuss over you, and you've always been so modest and unassuming. Well, not always, Don. There are times when I'm a little on the hammy side. Of course, it doesn't show, but, uh, but it's there. Eh, Mary? Well, if you ask me... Who asked you? <laughs> Go away, Mary, please. Yeah, leave him alone, Mary. Say, Jackson, when you started out in radio, I'll bet you never thought you'd last ten years, did you? You said it, Phil. Ten years in this business is a long time. Gee, I'll never forget how nervous I was on my first broadcast. See, there I stood, 24 years old and scared to death. <laughs> Oh, boy, what I went through, huh? Uh, what was that age again? Thirty-seven. Anyway, fellas, <laughs> as I started to tell you, that first broadcast was really a thrill. There I stood shaking like a leaf. Nervous, huh? Why, Don, I couldn't even hold the script. I thought I was going to faint. But the announcer came over, put his arm around me and said, Take it easy, son. There's nothing to worry about. Just step up to that microphone and show him what you can do. And good luck to you, lad. Gee, he was a nice guy. By the way, Jack, who was the announcer on your first broadcast? Peter the Hermit. <laughs> now cut that out. Mary, for heaven's sake, will you please try and remember that this is my 10th anniversary? <laughs> Right, fellas. Thanks, thanks. You can stop with that. I'm a jolly good fellow. Now let's forget it. Now where was I? You were telling us about your first radio program. Yeah. What product were you selling in them days, Jackson? Well, I was on the air for Burger's Black Beauty Buggy Whip. Buggy Whip? And this was only ten years ago. Well, old man Burger was trying to bring back the horse. Gosh, I'll never forget that program. We had a theme song and everything. A theme song? Yeah, I even remembered it. It went like this. Now, let's see. What was that melody? Oh, yes. 
Dum pa pa pum pum pum. Won't you buy our buggy whips? You will find that they are pips. If you want your horse to jump, he will go kalump kalump. When you hit him on the rump with a burger's buggy whip, it really snaps. <laughs> Of course, of course, fellas, that doesn't sound like anything now, but if you could have heard those eight voices behind me and a team of horses whinnying, <laughs> I tell you, it was sensational. Hey, Jack, whatever made you leave that program? Oh, it was one of those things. I went up to see old man Berger one day about a raise, and he whipped me with a Berger's buggy <laughs> whip. But enough reminiscing about my early days. It's probably boring, everybody. No, no, this is very interesting, Jack. Uh, what program did you go on after Burger's Buggy Whips? Well, from there, I went on one of those early morning dramatic shows. The Heartbreaks of Hortense Hooligan. <laughs> I used to break her heart every morning at 7 a.m. I was pretty good. Huh? Oh, I remember that program, Jack. Were you the leading man? Yes, sir, that was me. I remember that show, too. It was awful. Well, it was so awful, Mary. Why would you listen to it? Why didn't you turn it off? I was such a little girl, and I couldn't reach the dial. <laughs> Mary, that was only nine and a half years ago. And if I remember correctly, young lady, you didn't have any trouble peeking over that hosiery counter. <laughs> anyway, Don, if I'd have kept up with my dramatic work today, I might have been one of... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Congratulations on your anniversary. Thank you, Dennis. Oh, uh, oh, by the way, Dennis, uh, you haven't signed your contract yet for next season. Did you speak to your mother like I told you to? Yes, I did. Well, what'd she say? She said, it's not worth the Kleenex it's written on. Dennis, in the first place, it's not written on Kleenex. And in the second place, let me give you a little advice. On my first radio job, I made the same mistake you did. I went to my boss, asked him for a raise, and he whipped me. Well, beat me, Daddy. I want one, too. Dennis, this is no time to talk about money. This is my anniversary. And now that you're here, let's have your song. Okay. Hold it a minute. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. All right, buddy, what are you waiting for? Did you ever hear about tipping, or do I have to enlighten you? <laughs> Jack, I want you to... Oh, yes, a tip. Here's a dime for you. I'm sorry I overlooked it. Oh, don't mention... <laughs> it. This guy's nuts. Mary, uh, who's the telegram mm, 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 from? Huh? It's from Fred Allen. Fred Allen? What is that? Now, wait a minute. Now, stop her. What's the matter with you? Allen is not a jolly good fellow. All right, Mary, what's he got to say? Uh, dear Jack, congratulations, and I knew you'd leave your print and radio. You're just the heel that can do it. <laughs> What a rat. Why do I let him get away with that stuff? Why don't I do something about it? Why don't I beat him up? Because you're a coward. Oh, yes, that's it. Sing, Dennis. Mary, say that wire. I'm going to send him ten awful words. Very good. Very good, Dennis. Very good. Yes, sir. That was My Sister and I, sung by Dennis Day, our own Irish nightingale. And now, ladies and gentlemen... I'm not a nightingale, Mr. Benny. I'm Irish, though. I know you are, Dennis. I just called you a nightingale as a figure of speech. And now, ladies and gentlemen... A nightingale? No. I mean, I know it's a bird. It happens to be a bird that sings beautifully. Oh. That's why I called you a nightingale. It's meant as a compliment, that's all. Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Are you mad because I'm not a bird? <laughs> no. Believe me, Dennis, I'm very happy that you're almost human. And now, ladies and gentlemen... It's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? <laughs> Certainly is. Hey, Phil, it's time for a band number. What's it going to be? Well, Jackson, we're going to play a real old-timer tonight in a swell tune. It's called Ida, Sweet as Apple Cider. Say, that is a good tune. You know, when I did my violin act in vaudeville, Ida used to be one of my feature numbers. Be nice hearing it again. Go ahead, Phil. Oh, say, Jack, this being your anniversary, I think we ought to put the spotlight on you tonight. Now, how about playing a chorus of Ida on your fiddle? On my fiddle? Oh, say, I, I might at that. Don had opened his big fat mouth. 
Well, Don's got a little sentiment in them that's more than you have. Bill, can I borrow a fiddle from one of your violinists? You ask him. He doesn't speak English. <laughs> Never mind. I'll use my own. I happen to have it right here under my arm. Now, wait a minute. I'll tune it up. Lot well, that'll help. Just the same, I'm going to tune it up. I'm not going to start out off key. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Charlie, give me A, will you? There, that's it. <laughs> uh, incidentally, fellas, when I did this number in my vaudeville act, I used to do a lot of tricks in the second chorus. You know, I'd hold my violin on my head and play it, and then between my knees. And then for a finish, I'd put the bow between my teeth and move the violin up and down. Try that now, and your teeth will move up and down. <laughs> Mary, the next time you say I have false teeth, you're going to make the June payment on them. <laughs> All right, fellas, let's go. Ida, sweet as apple cider. That was Ida, sweet as apple cider, sung by Phil Harris with a violin solo by Jack Benny, that syncopated boy. <laughs> well, how'd you like it, fellas? Oh, that was swell, Jack. Very good, Mr. Benny. No kidding, Jackson, that was okay. Huh, Mary? It was a lot better than I expected. Thanks, Mary. What I expected shouldn't, shouldn't happen, happen to, to a, a dog. dog. <laughs> that I knew. Oh... Uh... Well, I haven't played my violin in a long time. I am a little rusty. Anyway, thanks for helping me out, Phil. That was a nice touch on my anniversary. And that ain't all, Jackson. Shall we give it to him now, fellas? Give me what? You tell him, Don. Tell me what? Well, Jack, we've all been with you for a long time, and we felt that the least we could do on this occasion was to buy you a gift as a token of our love and loyalty. Well, so you devils have been holding back on me, eh? Well, where's the present? Where is it? The men are out in the hall with it, Mr. Wilson. Men? What can it be? All right, carry it in, boys. Right this way, fellas. Now take it easy. Don't drop it. Oh, my goodness. Look at that enormous crate. See, it takes four men to carry it. Uh, set it down here, boys. Easy now. Gosh, it's certainly heavy. Well, quick, quick, open it up. I'm dying to see what it is. Okay, men, open it up. Hey, Don, I can't see the press. Oh, pardon me, Jack. Well, Jackson, are you surprised? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How you like it? Oh, fellas, just what I needed. A cigarette lighter with 50 gallons of fluid. <laughs> oh! Well, by golly. Isn't it well, Mr. Benny? Oh, gee, I can't get over it. Just think, I'll be able to light my cigars with this lighter until I'm 8,000 years old. Uh, 10,000 if I'm conservative. Oh, what a present. Well, we didn't know what to get you, Jack. You've got everything. Everything and a barrel of oil. Well, thanks. All right, boys, roll out the barrel. Leave it in the hall. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. I wrote a poem that goes with that present. Oh, goody, that's all I need now. Never mind the poem. Let her read it, Jackson. It's very apropos for Paul. <laughs> apropos for Paul. Phil, you've got the right word, but you ought to have brakes put on it. <laughs> All right, Mary, let's hear the poem. It's my own fault for being on the radio so many years. What's the title of it? Old Man Benny, He Just Keeps Puffing Along. <laughs> I'm warning you, Mary. This better be good. <laughs> Now, go ahead. <clears throat> oh, Jack Benny, oh, Jack Benny, I salute you, Mary Liz. A doll darn I do not give. I don't give a doll darn either. You, know. you have stood the acid test, and you've had a great success. Keep it 
think you are a mess. So do I. Mary, you bees mean to me. <laughs> Mary, you bees mean to me. Go ahead. Okay. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's a silly joke. Though. How we love you, dear Jack Benny. How we hope Hold that... it. Hold it. Wait till I answer the phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. All right. What do you want? Boss, I'm telling you for the last time, I don't live in the same house with Mr. Billsey. He's crazy every day. Oh, you're always worrying about our border. What's he done now? He came down here a little while ago dressed in a dinner jacket. Well, it's Sunday night. What's wrong with a dinner jacket? That's all he had on. No pants, no shoes, no socks, no nothing. <laughs> oh, well, he's, he's absent-minded. We know that. He's a little peculiar. Then right in the middle of the dinner, he sent the mashed potatoes back to the kitchen. So what is wrong with the mashed potatoes? He wanted lumps put in them. <laughs> Well, next time, make him with lumps. Believe me, Rochester, there's nothing wrong with Mr. Billingsley. He's just a little eccentric. Eccentric? Yes. Boss, when a man walks with the hall tree all afternoon, eccentric ain't apropos <laughs> All What? Mr. Billingsley's been waltzing with the hall tree? He calls it Dolores. Dolores? <laughs> Why the romance, boss? They're flying to humor tonight. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That's the silliest thing he's ever done. Well, humor him, Rochester. Do something. Maybe I ought to lump him instead of a potato. <laughs> no, don't touch him. I'll be home right after the broadcast. Meanwhile, tell him the hall tree is married already. <laughs> See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? The gas man came today. <laughs> Oh, he did, eh? You see, Rochester, and you thought Carmichael ate him. What did he want? You wanted to know what happened to the other gas man. <laughs> oh, forget it, will you? Goodbye. Gosh, I, I hope Mr. Billingsley doesn't go too far off the beam. Now, he's the best boarder I've ever... How we love you, dear Jack Benny. Oh, yes, the poem. More than ever, deed we do. And we hope that we will always keep on loving mm-mm you. <laughs> oh, get this over with. Dennis loves you, Philby loves you, Donzie loves you, so do I. So does Sammy, so does Martha, so does Bert and Apple Pie. <laughs> Gee, I was thrilled with my violin solo. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And, fellas, I can't tell you how happy you all made me on my 10th anniversary. Gee, it was... Oh, for heaven's sake, stop, will you? Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we mentioned last week, Jack Benny has started production on his new picture, Charlie's Hand, in which he masquerades as a woman. So without further ado, let us eavesdrop on Jack's dressing room at 20th Century Fox Studio, where he's getting ready to go on the set. Take it away! Now, Rochester, hurry up. I want that corset pulled tighter. I'll pull him, boss! Ooh, you don't have to put your knee in my back. What's the matter with you? You've been half an hour getting me dressed. Well, boss... I'm not used to women's clothes. What you need is a maid. I don't need a maid. Just use your head, that's all. You ought to know that my pantaloons go under my petticoat. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, hand me my wig. Old faithful or the one you wear in the picture? <laughs> the one I wear in the picture with the curls on it. I want to be all dressed in my costume by the time the gang gets here. They're coming over to watch me shoot. Here you are, boy. Thanks. Darn it, these curls always get in my eyes. Oh, well, I'll just have to peek through them. <laughs> According to the blueprint here, you got it all backwards. <laughs> backwards? Obviously. Well, how do I know about this stuff? Oh, by the way, Mr. Carnegie, you're supposed to be my makeup man, and all you do is sit in the corner and stare at me. Why don't you get started? Well, frankly, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> oh, you don't? Well, let me tell you something. My makeup man at Paramount never had any trouble. He used to make me look good. I know. The whole industry is talking about it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, don't be smart. Now, get over here and make me up or I'll tell Mr. Zanuck on you. He's the head of the studio and I play polo with him every Saturday. Will you please hold still? Hold still. Hold still. Now, close your eyes. I want to glue your eyelashes on. Oh, all right. Get going. What's that? I did it again, boys. I caught another mouse. <laughs> Rochester, how many times do I have to tell you that's not a mouse trap? That's a bustle. <laughs> the idea. A bustle? Yes. Okay, I'll take the keys out. <laughs> take everything out. I have to put it on in a few minutes. There. There, that's fine. What are you talking about? You've got the lashes on my lower lid. I look like I'm peeking over a head. <laughs> a fine thing. Oh, nobody will notice it. They will, too. <laughs> now, now paint my lips on, will you please? And I'll give you a hint. They go horizontal, not vertical. <laughs> what a makeup man. Come in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, get a load of those eyelashes. You look like you're peeking over a head. You see? You see? I told you. Now, now put them where they belong, Mr. Carnegie. Oh, very well. What a dodo. You think you know everything, don't you? If you didn't remind me of my mother, I'd punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Mary, hold my dress. <laughs> I'll show him. Now, Jack, be careful. He's got much longer fingernails than you have. What do I care? Sit down, Mary. Oh, say, Jack, here's that pair of earrings you wanted to borrow. Thanks. Well, what do you know? I gave you these earrings for Christmas, didn't I? Yeah, one in 39 and one in 40. <laughs> well, they're very expensive. Oh, Rochester. Yes, ma'am. Stop with that yes, ma'am. <laughs> Rochester, as soon as the picture is over, remind me to return these gold earrings to Miss Livingston. Don't ever drop them in spinach. You'll never find them. That green is antique. And we'll get a better gag later. Now, Mr. Ah! Ah! <laughs> now, Mr. Carnegie, will you please finish making me up? After all, I'm not supposed to be Betty Grable. In the first place... Hey, Jack, look who's on the horse. It's Mr. Zanish. Hello, Mr. Zanish. Hey, hey. See, isn't that a beautiful, isn't that a beautiful horse, Mary? She keeps it right here on the lot. You ought to know, eh, Jack? <laughs> Mary, if you mention one word about that to anybody, you'll get yours. Say, Rochester, run over to the set and ask the director how soon he'll leave you. Yes, sir. Oh, say, boss, can I put in a word for myself? Rochester, I've already explained to you that you're not going to be in this picture. You're out of it. Well, don't look for a long run on Central Avenue. <laughs> They'll like it, don't worry. Now get over to that set. Okay. Here's Mr. Wilson and Mr. Day, boys. Oh, hello, Don, Dennis. Oh, hello, Don. How are you? Well, what do you think of me, boys? Oh, you're pretty as a picture, Jack. Mr. Benny, what are you wearing a dress for? Well, Dennis, in the picture, Charlie's aunt, I'm Charlie's aunt. Oh. Well, why doesn't Charlie have an aunt that's a woman? Well, he has got an aunt that's a woman, but I'm his aunt that's a man. I mean, I mean, when his real aunt doesn't show up, I'm the ant that takes his ant's place. Do you understand? Who, me? <laughs> Who the heck do you think I'm talking to? <laughs> Sit down, Dennis. I'll explain it to you later. Hey, Jack, this is a pretty swell dressing room we've got here. Beautifully furnished, isn't it? Yes, Don. Frigidaire, shower, bath, and everything. Oh, boy, a shower. Certainly is lovely, Jack, but what's that sit for chewing in the corner? <laughs> Mary. <laughs> uh, yes, John, it is lovely. This is about the swankiest dressing room on the lot. But what about that pitchfork? Oh, that. <laughs> There's a clause in Jack's contract. You've got to take care of Mrs. Zanuck's heart. <laughs> never mind. Why, I never heard of such a thing. Well, you see, Don, I have what is known as an actor stable boy contract. <laughs> see, they have a lot of those two-way agreements. See, mine is like a producer-director contract. Only... Only you're in there picking. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, it's more or less of a personal favor, so I don't mind. Of course, I could kill my agent. <laughs> oh, well. There we are, Mr. Benny. You're all made up. Thanks. I'll see you on the set. Okay. Bring your pitchfork, you little devil. Get out of here. <laughs> I have to put up with that guy every morning. But that, I do look cute in this outfit, don't I? You certainly do, Jack. You know, I think these curls are just the right touch. Hey, listen to that. Who's taking a shower? It must be Dennis. He went in there. Oh, well, I'll be done. I hope the kid didn't forget to take his clothes off. I'll bet eight to one he sings. Well, naturally, all tenors sing in the shower. Sing, Dennis. You know, I think these curls are just the right touch to my face. Is that a Wasn't that swell? Uh, very good, Dennis. You can dry yourself now. Where are the towels? In the laundry. They'll be back Thursday. <laughs> okay. As soon as they come, throw one in. I will. Kids got more patience. Say, I wonder. I wonder why they don't call me on the set. By the way, Jack, is Phil coming over to watch you work today? Yeah, he'll be along pretty soon. Say, hey, what do you think about Phil getting married? Wasn't that a surprise? It sure was. And incidentally, kids, I got a great idea. When Phil comes in, let's not say a word about it and see how he takes it. Yeah, let's make off like we don't know anything about it. Oh, are you so embarrassed? You wonder what to do. Now, look. <laughs> look, kids. Look, kids. As soon as, soon as he walks in, I'll... Let me see the set for him. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. The director says he'll be ready for you in about ten minutes. Okay. In the meantime, can I ask him about me being in the picture? Rochester, I told you there's no part for you. The scene is in England. You can't be an English butler. No, but I can be a carbon copy. <laughs> Never mind. Tell the director I'll be over in a few minutes. Okay. Cheerio, boss. <laughs> I wish he'd stop bothering Mr. Mayo. Do you think Archie Mayo is a good director for you, Jack? Oh, he'll be marvelous. He's made a lot of important pictures. The Great American Broadcast, Four Sons, Marco Polo, Invention City, Petrified Forest. Well, if he made Petrified Forest, he'll be perfect for you. <laughs> well, maybe that's a funny gag, but I don't get it. Now, ribbing is all right here, Mary, but when we're on the set... And wait a minute, I'll bet that's Phil. Now, remember, don't talk about it, Mary. Come in. Well, hello, Phil. Hi, Jackson. Hello, Mary. John. How are you, Phil? How's the boy? Oh, I can't complain. I've been on a little vacation down in Mexico. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, did you, uh, uh, did you go down there for a rest, Phil? Yeah, I kind of wanted to change the scenery. You know how it is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, Mexico is beautiful. Oh, okay. Phil. <laughs> Hey, Jackson, this is some dressing room. Sure is ritzy. You like it, Phil? You know, uh, Alice Fay used to have this dressing room. Alice Fay? Is she that cute little blonde? You know who she is. <laughs> and we can't hold back any longer, Phil. Congratulations. I hope you and Alice will be very happy. Congratulations, Phil. Oh, good luck, Phil. Hello, <laughs> boy. Well, dog gone, so you went and done it, huh? Yeah, believe me, Jackson, this is a life. Home every night for dinner, then I put on my slippers, and we sit in front of the fireplace for hours. You two sit by the fireplace in this hot weather? Who knows about the weather? <laughs> well, love... Love sure is a wonderful thing. Well, as long as we're all here, let's go over on the set. They're waiting for me. Okay, Jack. I'll take this mouse trap along. That's my bustle. Thank you. So long, Dennis. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. If you run across a towel, let me know. <laughs> we will. Come on, kids. Stage four is right down this way. Say, hey, Jack, isn't that Caesar Romero coming towards us? Where? Oh, yeah. Show this costume I got on. Who was all the boys? Watch the clerk with him. He's handsome. Hello, Mr. Romero. Hello, Miss. Get this. Hello, Caesar. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Oh, nuts. He's the only guy that didn't fall for it. Gee, I hope I know my line. The director gets so mad when I hold up. Oh, hello, Mr. Zanny. Hi, ho, Freddy. Oh, Freddy. Oh, Freddy. 
see, he's so proud of his organization. And you can't blame him, either. See, that's a beautiful horse he's riding. It sure is. Is that a Palomino? No, it's a pal jack <laughs> Now, cut that off. Uh, here's the stage, fellas. Now, listen, Mary, I'm warning you for the last time. When we're on that set, I don't want you to be white cracking all the time. Mr. Mayo isn't temperamental, but I'm taking a chance now bringing you on the set without permission. So you just sit over in that corner and watch out for the... Well, this is it. You see, fellas, this set represents an English garden. Come on, they're going to shoot over there by the gate. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quiet on the stage. Listen, boys. Stop that noise. The director's in a race. Now settle down. Uh, those, uh, those are Mr. Mayo's assistant directors. They used to be a trio of Waterville. Baldy, Bride, and Baldy. <laughs> Nice boy. Huh? Say, Jack, who's that fella crawling around on his hands and knees? Where? Oh, that's Kev Marley, the cameraman. The cameraman? Yes, he broke his glasses the other day, and he's afraid he'll bump into something. <laughs> I hope the sound man doesn't lose his ear trumpet. Say, Jackson, ain't that Kay Francis standing over there? Yes, we're doing our first scene together in the picture today. Come on over, Phil, I'll introduce you to her. Now, wait a minute, Bob. What are you trying to pull? You're talking to a married man. <laughs> What are you getting excited about? I'm only going to introduce you to the girl. Well, you know how weak I am. <laughs> All right, Phil. Stay here with Don. I'll see you later. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. All this noise must faulty. We're head men here. The land and ears. To faulty, glide and faulty. We have no head. You know, I, um, you know, I worked with those boys once in Peoria. They used to do a trapeze act. Two of them fell off a lot. <laughs> well, um, excuse me, fellas. I'm going over and, uh, I'm going over and talk to Kay Francis. Uh, I've never met her, Jack. Can I come along? Not now, Mary. You charged me 25 cents to come on this set, and I want to meet Kay Francis. <laughs> All right, come on. Now, Mary, Mary, don't let this get around, but I hear that Kay's nuts about me. Oh, you think every girl you work with in a picture is nuts about you. Well? You haven't got as much sex appeal as a smoked white fish. Oh, yeah? I'll go up any, against any white fish you dig up, sister. <laughs> I'm telling you, the girl likes me, so don't start anything. Well, hello, Kay. Oh, hello, Mother. <laughs> Mother, it's me, Jack. Pardon me. Well, you you look gorgeous in that outfit, Kay. That dress is very flattering to your figure. Thank you, Jack. Not the stunning gown you have on. Do you think so? Yes. But pull it up a little. Your tattoo shows. <laughs> Oh, yes, I must remember that. Well, Kay. Uh, Kay, uh, here we are, finally making a picture together. Kay Francis and Jack Benny. See, isn't it thrilling? Gosh, aren't you excited? Aren't you, Kay? What do you want me to do, pants? <laughs> No, of course not. Are you sure you're nuts about Jack? Mary. <laughs> oh, uh, pardon me, Kay. This is Mary Livingston. Oh, hello, Mary. I've always enjoyed you on the radio. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, that's too, too sweet of you. <laughs> Mary, what's the matter with you? Uh, don't, uh, don't pay any attention to her, Kay. She's always a little jealous. Oh, I don't mind. After all, Mary and I have something in common. Oh, are you jealous too? No, but I used to shop at the May Company. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good, Kay. Very good indeed. Give me my quarterback. <laughs> 
Nothing doing. You met her, didn't you? You know, Kay, I was just thinking, the scene we're going to do today is where you find out I'm not Charlie's aunt, but that I'm really a man. And that's the beginning of our romance. Yes, I've read the script. Oh, have you? Well, it's a wonderful situation, but it lacks something at the finish. Don't you feel that we ought to embrace and kiss each other so that the audience will realize we're in love? Don't you feel that way? Frankly, I feel a kiss there, you know? I mean, uh, a kiss would seal our relationship. Well, why does the kiss a seal? <laughs> well, I'm serious, Kay. Well, I don't agree with you, Jack. A kiss at that point would spoil the entire story. Oh. Uh, well, don't you think... Jack, why don't you speak to the director about it? Okay, Kay. Well, that's quite a pun. <laughs> oh, okay, Kay, yeah. That's a good one. Jack Jerk, there's another pun. <laughs> Mary, please. Yes, Kay, I'll speak to... Oh, here comes Mr. Mayo now. Uh, uh, hello, Mr. Mayo. Hello, Archie. Hello, Jack. Hello, Kay. Well, Archie, here I am, raring to go. We'll find out. Uh, now, Kay... Uh... <laughs> now, Kay, you understand the first scene we're shooting is the one where you discover that Jack is really a man. Yes, Archie. And as I understand it, the situation comes to me as a surprise. Exactly. Oh, Archie... Archie, uh... <laughs> oh, Archie, Miss Francis had a rather good suggestion a moment ago. She thought that at the finish of the scene, we ought to embrace and kiss each other. Isn't that a good idea? Why, Jack Benny! I mean, how, uh, how do you feel about it, Archie? I don't feel about it. The kiss is out. Oh. Oh, well, tough luck, Kay. <laughs> uh, it's too bad. They told me about you, but I wouldn't believe it. Well, I... Uh, uh, come on, now, you lovely people. Let's rehearse it the way it's written. All right, all right. Oh, pardon me, Archie. This is Mary Livingston. Oh, how do you do? Hello, Archie. You ought to lay off the starches. <laughs> Mary, he's not so plump. Now, listen, Jack, let's get going. Let's rehearse. Well, Mary insulted you. She said you were fat. Well, I am fat. Okay, okay. All right, now, everybody, quiet for rehearsal. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. They're ready for rehearsal. Hickory, dickory. Dickory, doc. The mouse ran up the bustle. Oh, Mother Drew. Oh, what? What is this, anyway? Come on, let's cut the clowning. Now, you've got the first speech, Kay. You've just found out that Jack is not Charlie's aunt, but you kid him along. Yes, I understand. And, Jack, you're still the woman. Yeah, I get it. Now, go ahead, Kay. Read your first line. <clears throat> So you're Charlie's aunt, eh? Not a coincidence. I knew your late husband quite well. I knew your late husband quite well. Well, Jack, what are you waiting for, the Robert E. Lee? <laughs> oh, pardon me. I was worried about Dennis Day. He needs a towel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me, uh, give me that again, Kay. So you're Charlie's aunt, eh? That's a coincidence. I knew your late husband quite well. Oh, did you really? Hiya, Jack. You're a woman. Oh, did you really? Hiya. Oh, did you really? How's that? I mean, how's that? Is that a woman? Nobody I know. Well, that's the best I can do. Well, now, look, Jack, your voice is all right, but remember you're in England, so talk with an English accent. Well, Mr. Pearlberg, the producer, said I should do it my own way. I don't care what Pearlberg says. Talk with an English accent. All right, all right. Give me that lead again, Kay. I knew your late husband. I knew your late husband quite well, and I wish you were with him. That's not the lie. <laughs> now, please, Kay. Hey, Jack. What? I'm beginning to like her. Oh, stop. <laughs> now, Kay, give me the whole speech, will you, please? Oh, my goodness. Now, remember, Jack, an English accent. Go ahead, Kay. So you're Charlie's aunt, eh? That's a coincidence. I knew your late husband quite well. Oh, did you, Riley? <laughs> Riley, what kind of an accent is that? Well, that's the best I can do. Anyway, I'm not English. I was born in Los I'm going to see Mr. Pearlberg. Quiet! 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 <laughs> Now, cut that out, you guys. Heaven knows I'm not 
not funny. But if you think I'm going to change my personality and my character just to make you happy, you... Oh, hello, Mr. Zanuck! You've got another thing coming, and I'll tell you something else. This wig I'm wearing is too darn hot. Oh, they'll grab a pitch for it. I'm talking to Mr. Mayo. You know, Archie, this isn't the first picture I've ever made. I fought with other directors, too. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to read my lines my way. Come on, Kay, give me that line again. I ain't going to be late. But thanks, Miss Francis and Mr. Mayo. Good night, folks. The Jello program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the next to the final broadcast of the season, we bring you a man who came to you last October fresh as a daisy and is now standing here faded as a future, Jack Benny. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I'm sure glad we've only got one more program to do. After 35 consecutive weeks of broadcasting, I'm worn out. Boy, I'm all in. Oh, Jack, radio isn't as tough as all that. When you come right down to it, you only broadcast one day a week. I know, Don, but think of all the preparation, the jokes, and the new ideas I have to have. I tell you, I'm exhausted. Well, you've got writers, haven't you? You mean corn and pone? <laughs> <laughs> Writers. A fine team. I bought them a typewriter the other day, and they did a maypole dance with a ribbon. <laughs> a lot of help they are. Where'd you ever find those boys, Jack? Were they professional writers when you picked them up? No, they were just a couple of fast talkers. I met them in a drugstore in New York. Uh, one of them used to demonstrate hair tonic, and the other one drank it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, they told me they were writers, so I hired them, and I've been sorry ever since. Well, Jack, if they don't do their work properly, why don't you get rid of them? Why don't you fire them? No, I'm going to give them one more chance, Don. But if I don't grow hair by next year, out they go. <laughs> no jokes, no hair, no wonder I'm tired. Oh, Jack, you always have to make such a big issue out of everything. What? To hear you talk, anybody think you work like a dog. Well, that's the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard. Why, Mary, do you realize what 35 weeks in radio takes out of me? Well, you take something out of radio, don't you? That's not the point. <laughs> that doesn't tire me. <laughs> it's the work I have to do. Just lucky that I have a good constitution and the strain doesn't show. Not much. You're as washed out as a tea bag in a boarding house. <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense because a used tea bag is tan and I'm as pale as a ghost. Now, you know what it's from, don't you? It's those weeks and weeks of hard, grinding labor. Labor? Do you call what you do labor? Well, chew, 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 if it isn't the Honeymoon Express. <laughs> uh, what did you say, baby? Uh, that's, uh, that's what she calls them, folks. Uh, uh, what did you say? Look, Jackson, I've been listening to this chatter, and I don't know what you're beefing about. You only do one broadcast a week, don't you? Yes, but I... And that runs a half hour, right? Yes, but I get more lines than anyone else on the program. That's because you buy more hair tonic. <laughs> Mary, I'm talking to Phil. And another thing, Jackson, out of that half hour, Don Wilson does two commercials. Yes, but... Uh... And Dennis Day sings a song. I know, but... And the boys and I do ten minutes of music. You do ten minutes of. Let's not classify it. <laughs> Music, he calls it. Well, Alice thinks my band is wonderful. Phil, Alice is a dear, sweet girl, and she's entitled to her opinion. But love is blind, and in this case, also deaf. <laughs> anyway, Phil, I don't know what you're driving at. What he means, Jack, is this. When you boil it down, you personally work on this program only 13 minutes a week. What? Imagine, only 13 minutes. Well, it's not the time involved, Don. It's the importance. For your information, it only took George Washington 12 minutes to cross the Delaware. How do you know? Jack was rowing the boat. <laughs> I was not. I missed it. I mean, I wasn't in the boat. <laughs> now, let me tell you guys something else. Hello, everybody. What's all the excitement? Oh, this gang. Hello, Dennis. What's the matter? Jack's complaining because he has to work 13 minutes a week. Oh, 
Where's he working? <laughs> At the Acme Buttonhole Factory in Extra Pants, Nebraska. <laughs> Where am I working? I was just telling the gang that the strain of broadcasting week after week has made a wreck out of me. Me too. I'd have a nervous breakdown if I could find a sanitarium that would take tenors. <laughs> Dennis, what have you got to be tired about? You don't have that mental strain every week like I do. Well, I suppose it doesn't take brains to sing a song. No, not necessarily. Crickets can sing, and they don't have any brains. Pardon me, Jack, pardon me. Crickets don't exactly sing. Their song comes from rubbing their hind legs together. Oh. Say, I'll have to try that sometime. <laughs> Uh, do, Dennis, and let me know how it comes out. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's have your song in the old-fashioned way. We're about ready. Okay. What's it going to be? I'm going to sing You and I, a brand-new number written by Mary Beth Wilson. That's Meredith Wilson. <laughs> He's a conductor on the Maxwell House program. Oh. Now, go ahead. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I wonder if your writers would sell me a bottle of hair tonic. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I imagine they would. Uh, do you want to grow hair? Yes, I'm tired of the wind and the rain in my scalp. <laughs> oh, get out of here. You know, every time I see his head, I feel like sticking my finger in his ear and bowling. <laughs> well, go ahead and sing, Dennis. With my legs on my tonsils. With your tonsils. Forget about that cricket. Very good. That was You and I, sung by Kenny Baker, and very good, Kenny. You know, a song like that is especially good for your type of... Kenny the... Baker? I'm Dennis Day, ain't I? <laughs> what? Oh, certainly. What's the matter with me? See, fellas, I'm so tired and nervous, I don't know what I'm talking about. You guys think I don't need a rest. You're all so smart. And now, ladies and gentlemen... You're not mad because I'm not Kenny Baker, are you? <laughs> No, no, Dennis, I'm just confused, that's all. I'm irritable because I'm tired. And now, ladies and gentlemen... If you think Kenny Baker can rub his hind legs together, why don't you get him? <laughs> Dennis, will you please stop interrupting? Now, go crawl under the piano. Okay. See you later. Hmm. And now, folks... What a kid. And now, folks, Mr. Don Wilson, that eminent American playwright has written another of his famous one-act plays. Take it, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before proceeding, I would like to announce that any resemblance in this play to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. That's right. The play opens in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Philbert Harris. Now, Jack Denny will play the play. Hey, wait a minute. I object. I don't want any play about my personal life, bud. What's this got to do with you? <laughs> Phil, the character in our play is Philbert Harris, not Phil. There's no connection. Go ahead, Don. Philbert, an orchestra leader, has just finished playing a one-night stand on the sidewalk in front of the Ambassador Hotel. Uh-huh. Hey, now, hold it a minute. This guy's an orchestra leader, and I'm an orchestra leader. I smell a rat. Well, it's not you. <laughs> Continue, Don. As the scene opens, Philbert's newly wedded wife, played by Miss Livingston, is at home waiting for her husband, Philbert, played by Mr. Benny. It is dinner time. Curtain music. Oh, dear. I hope Daddy isn't late. I prepared this meal for him with my own little hands. Gosh, look at that salad. I wonder if the lettuce goes under the tomatoes or over the tomatoes. <laughs> oh, well. That must be baby now. Come in. <laughs> Well, 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 hiya, honey. Are you jiving? Are you on the beam? <laughs> Are you solid? Now, hold on there, Jackson. That guy is me. I talk like that. Quiet, I'm telling you, this is a fictitious character. I'll take it again, Mary. Hiya, honey. Are you jiving? Are you on the beam? What's cooking, baby? Ham hocks and butter beans. <laughs> now you're in business, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Now you're operating. <laughs> yeah. Well, sit down, Phil. Mary. Bert. Hmm. 
Say, honey, this food is okay, but where are them whipped potatoes you said he was going to make? We aren't having any. I couldn't find the whip. <laughs> nice going, honey. That's a loom loom. <laughs> You're in there punching, Alice. Alice? Now I got you. That's my wife's name. Phil, this Alice is A-L-Y-C-E. <laughs> How does your wife spell her name? Well, wait a minute. I'll call her up. <laughs> Believe me, it's A-L-I-C-E. There's no connection. <laughs> There, you see, Phil, aren't you ashamed of yourself? That play had absolutely no connection with you. Well, I wish the quiz kids was here so I could check on that. <laughs> don't worry about it. Well, Don, that was a very original playlet. And incidentally, while we're on our vacation, why don't you write up a few more for next season? Well, I'll try to. By the way, Jack, speaking of vacations, what are you doing this summer? Are you going out of town? Uh, well, Don, I intended to go to one of those big fashionable resorts. You know, where you have to dress for dinner and throw your money away. But uh, I changed my mind. You know how Jack hates to dress for dinner. <laughs> yeah. So instead of that, Don, I intend to rough it. I'm going to a little place in the High Sierras called Eagle Nook Lodge and just fish my head off. It's way, way up in the mountains. How high is the place, Jackson? Uh, $3 a day. Oh, you mean the altitude? <laughs> yeah. It's about 7,000 feet. But it's ideal for me. Just give me a mountain stream and a fishing rod, and brother, those trout better watch out. Oh, sure. You wait and see. You couldn't catch a herring and Lindy's with Abe Lyman for bait. <laughs> Mary, one more word out of you, and I'm going to trade you in for a station wagon. <laughs> so cut it out. Well, so much for my vacation. Now, uh, how about a number, Phil? Okay, Jackson. Oh, Jack, I meant to ask you, who's taking over our show for the summer? Well, Don, the sponsor has a brand new program lined up called Regular Fellows. And it's adapted from Gene Byrne's famous comic strip of that name. You know, Puddinghead, Duffy, Jimmy Dugan, and all those kids. Oh, yes. Well, that sounds like it ought to be a lot of fun. It'll be a swell show, Don, and I wish Regular Fellows a lot of luck on their summer series. Well, go ahead, Phil. Let's have your number. Now what? Come in. Mr. Benny, I still can't find your writers. Where are they? Look, bud, it's none of my business, but I'm afraid hair tonic won't help you. How'd you lose your hair, anyway? I pulled off a tight hat too quick. <laughs> there, Tiny. What that guy needs is a mop with a part in it. Play, fella. <laughs> that was There'll Be Some Changes Made, played by Phil Harris and his All-American Rhythm King. American Rhythm Kings meaning a perfect description of this outstanding musical organization and all meaning I take it all back. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next Sunday our final broadcast of the season will originate from the Naval Training Station in San Diego, California. Oh, oh, boy, 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 boy. Boy. Yes, sir. And incidentally, fellas, you know, I used to be in the Navy, and this will be a kind of a reunion for me. I thought you were in the Army, Mr. Benny. No, Dennis, the Navy. Uh, don't you remember? He was in that boat with George Washington. <laughs> Mary, I take an oath. I never even knew George Washington. <laughs> Please believe me. But no kidding, fellas, sometimes I regret ever having left the Navy. Gee, with that blue suit and my blue eyes, I... I was really something. They really liked the service, huh, Jack? I certainly did, Don. And I was getting along swell. Who knows, if I'd have stuck, I might have been an admiral today. With my chest just covered with medals. How could you hold them up? <laughs> Mary, I really need a station wagon. <laughs> anyway, I was just talking about what might have been. You know, fellas, I often wonder if... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Oh, what do you want? Boys, if you don't get our boat out of the house, I'm leaving. That man's getting crazy every day. Oh, for goodness sake, you're always worried about Mr. Billingsley. What's the matter now? Well, he's been planning his summer vacation all day long. All right, what's crazy about that? He's out in the swimming pool right now taking swimming lessons. He's learning the Australian crawl. Well, what's crazy about that? He's going to swim to Australia. <laughs> Now, that's ridiculous. Mr. Billing Mr. Billingsley is obviously kidding you. He can't be serious about swimming to Australia. Oh, he means it, boy. He told me to meet him at the dock in San Pedro early tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, my God. What does he need you for? He wants me to hit him on the head with a bottle of champagne.
Well, use the domestic, not the imported. <laughs> now, look, Rochester, don't let him leave the house. It's up to you to humor him. Uh-huh. Explain to him that he's not a boat. That'll be pretty hard to do, boss. He's wearing two hats. Two hats? Yeah, he claims the top one is a poop dick. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, Rochester, keep him in the backyard by the swimming pool. And whatever you do, don't let him get away. Too late, boss. There he goes. <laughs> well, catch him. Stop him. Humor him. Tell him before he leaves, he's got to take on cargo. He's loaded now. <laughs> Rochester, do something. Lock the front door. I'll be home right after the broadcast. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. What? Are you going to broadcast from San Diego next Sunday? Yes. Am I going with you? Yes, Rochester. You're going to drive me down in the Maxwell. <laughs> what are you laughing at? If that Maxwell can get to San Diego, Mr. Billingsley's a cinch for Australia. <laughs> Never mind. And don't worry, we'll make it. Now, goodbye. Doggone Mr. Billings, he really thinks he's a boat. I'll have to put a sign on his door, Pier 18. <laughs> and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, doing our final broadcast from the Naval Training Station in San Diego. Oh, Mary. Yes, sir. I'm all in. Will you say good night for me? Sure. Good night, folks. Thanks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Naval Training Station here in San Diego, California, we bring you our master of ceremonies, that ex-sailor who doesn't know a porthole from a donut, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you. Jello again, this is Jack Benny, that old seahorse, or sea dog talking. <laughs> And Don, uh... <laughs> and Don, uh, you're a little off there on your introduction because if there's anything I was familiar with when I was in the Navy, it's portholes. I saw plenty of them. Uh, no kidding, Don. My neck hung out of so many portholes, they used to call me Lavalier Benny. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, Jack, I'll bet you're getting a big kick out of broadcasting down here, aren't you? I sure am, Don. And incidentally, how do you like this suit I'm wearing? Very apropos, Jack. Did you rent it for this occasion? Rent nothing. This is the uniform I wore back in 1917 when I was at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station. It still looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But judging from the <laughs> uniform, Jack, I gather that you were not an officer in the Navy. Oh, no, no, Don. I was just a plain, ordinary buck private. <laughs> No, oh, that's, uh, that's all. Oh, but pardon me, Jack, but buck private is an army term. You must have been a seaman. Oh, yes, yes, that's what I mean. I was a buck seaman. <laughs> and there's, uh, there's hardly a thing I don't know about nautical science. I can chart a course, tie a knot, and all that stuff. Well, huh? nice going. Well, tell me, sailor, can you box a compass? What is that, Don? I said, can you box a compass? Box a compass? No, Don, wrestling is my racket. I... <laughs> I, um, no, really, I... Well, look who's here. Ahoy there, Mary, as we say in the Navy. Hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hi, boys. Well. Say, you, you got a nice reception there, Mary. Why not? These boys know a trim craft when they see one. <laughs> well, hey, that's pretty egotistical. My goodness, you'd think you were Ann Sheridan or somebody. Look, chum, as long as Ann Sheridan is in Hollywood, I'm somebody here. Oh, oh, hmm, I see. Well, Mary, as long as you're so crazy about sailors, why didn't you notice the outfit I've got on? How do I look? You look like a ticket taker on the Coronado Ferry. <laughs> now, wait a minute. This is a sailor suit I'm wearing. Yes, Mary. Jack tells me that's the same uniform he had during the war. That's right. Uh, what ship are you on, the Monitor or the Merrimack? <laughs> I'm talking about the World War. And furthermore, I enlisted when I was only 14 years old. My gray hair fooled them, you know. Well, really. So I'm not so old. Huh? Why, Jack, you mean to say that you had gray hair when you were only 14 years old? Oh, even before that, Don, my hair turned gray on my eighth birthday. I had a terrible shock. No kidding. What happened? She lost a nickel down a manhole. <laughs> That wasn't it at all. I was frightened by a horse car. 
Anyway, I joined the Navy, served a year and a half, and I'm wearing that same uniform right now. Pardon me, is this the Jell-O program? Yes. Oh, hello, Dennis. <laughs> well, so uh, you didn't recognize me, eh, Dennis? I sure didn't. Did you join the Navy, Mr. Benny? Uh, no, this is the outfit I wore at Great Lakes in 1917. It's a real sailor suit. Oh, can I borrow it later? I want to get a date tonight. No, I'm... Uh... <laughs> Now, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Dennis, but I'm going over to the Paris Inn a little later myself. Um, and if there are any dates to be had, I'll get them. Of course, if I meet a girl and she has a friend, I'll bear you in mind. Any girl that would go out with you has not a friend in the world. <laughs> That's so. Don't worry, Dennis. You and I'll step out later and paint the town red. I don't want to paint. I want a neck. <laughs> That's what I mean. We'll go out and... <laughs> That's what I mean. We'll go out and have some fun. My, uh... No, really, my sailor suit will do the trick. Of course, I'm sorry I haven't got my medals with me. Uh, that would sink you. Your medals? Well, how'd you get them, Jack? For bravery and action? Well, I did see a lot of action, Donna. What action? I heard you fell out of your hammock, and when you came to, the war was over. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mary. If that's the case, how come I got this bullet hole in my uniform? Where? Right there between my shoulder blades. At the bullet hole. And why is that moth taking out of it? Because it's hot in here. <laughs> well, let's forget it. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, manana, manana, bambina, manana. Well, let's... <laughs> so, uh, let's forget it. Now, uh, Dennis? Yes, please? It's about time for a number, and I'm sure all the boys would like to hear you do a song, so let's have it. Okay. Gee whiz, a bullet hole. Were you wounded in the war, Mr. Benny? Uh, no. Uh, all I got was this bullet hole in the back of my blouse. Wait a minute. If a bullet went through your blouse, why didn't it hit your skin? I was moving, sister. <laughs> I'd like to see the bullet that could catch me. Now, uh, let's have your song, Dennis. Aye, aye, sir. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? You know, I used to have gray hair when I was in the Navy. Oh. <laughs> oh, then you did have hair at one time. Uh, how did you lose it? I didn't lose it. I have a regulation haircut. <laughs> Well, that'll do it every time. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> that was Till Reveille sung by Dennis Day, and it certainly fits here. Well, Dennis, that's the last number you'll sing on this program till October. But, Mr. Benny, what about the song I've got prepared for next week? Well, there won't be any next week, Dennis. Uh, next Sunday, the Jell-O Summer Show, regular fellas, takes over from New York. Say, Don... Why do I have to go to New York to sing? I'm happy here. <laughs> You're much too happy, or you'd get this through your head. <laughs> There'll be an entirely different show next Sunday. This program is over. You're not going to get paid. That I'm used to, but I want to sing. <laughs> well, get on a bicycle and tour the country. Yes. Yeah. Uh, look who's here. Well, if it isn't the SS Bridegroom. <laughs> Hiya, Jackson. All right, fellas, let me have it. Well, you, uh, you had to ask for it, didn't you, Phil? Ask for nothing. These guys love me. They're my pals. Oh, sure. What are you made up for, Jackson? Why that sailor suit? Well, I was in the Navy during the World War, Phil, so I thought it'd be nice to wear it down here. Of course, it's rather tight amidships. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't it, Mary? Yeah, and it's a little shiny around the stern. <laughs> no, it's not so shiny. Then why is the officer wearing smoke glasses? <laughs> Now don't be silly. Well, Phil, uh, you know, this is our last broadcast, and I'll be leaving for June Lake on that fishing trip tomorrow. You want to go with me? Well, I'd love to, Mac. <clears throat> I see. <laughs> but I'll be busy this summer playing them one-night stands. Oh, out in the sticks, eh? No, we're strictly big time this year. We ain't playing no ballrooms that's got cows sleeping at one end. <laughs> well, Phil, I'd like to see the cow that could sleep through one of your band numbers, you know? <laughs> oh, cut that out, will you? You're always running down my orchestra. Well, I'm not blaming the boys, Phil. It's you. You let him get away with murder. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something, Jackson. Alice thinks I'm the best band leader in the business. Phil, Alice is a dear, sweet girl, but she's giving you the business. <laughs>
Anyway, Phil, we're all glad that you and Alice are so happy. I'll say we're happy. You know, Jackson, we've been married almost a month, and we've only had one argument. Well, that's not a bad record, eh, Mary? No. What was the argument about, Phil? Oh, it was one of those things. We both wanted to use the curling iron at the same time. <laughs> oh, well, that's easily remedied, Phil. Why don't you buy a curling iron? She's working. Let her buy it. <laughs> hmm, you ever see a guy so vain about his appearance, Mary? If I didn't have a natural wave in my hair, I'd let it go. You haven't even got natural hair. Mary, one more word out of you, and I won't take you on a tour of that battleship. You've got to take me along. I've got the pass. What's this about a battleship, Jack? Well, we got permission from Admiral Blakely to go aboard, and it'll be a real thrill for all of us. Oh, boy, a battleship! Some dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Archie, I wish I knew my line for tomorrow. <laughs> in fact, uh, in fact, we ought to get started right away, fellas. Say, Phil, or while we're gone, have your orchestra play a few numbers and entertain the boys here. Okay, Jackson. Wait a minute, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Penny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Darn it, that's more applause than I got. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Rochester, what is it? I'm getting things packed for our fishing trip. When are we leaving, boy? Uh, we're leaving tomorrow afternoon, arrive at June Lake by midnight, and then we'll get up the next morning at 4 a.m. and go fishing. 4 a.m.? It'll still be dark. I don't care if it is dark. We're going fishing every morning at 4 a.m. What are we going to use for bait? Owls? <laughs> Look, Rochester, any angler will tell you that fish bite best early in the morning. So we'll have to get up at 4 a.m. We do, eh? Yes, you know, there's an old proverb, Rochester. The early bird catches the worm. I got the worm. Wake me up at nine. <laughs> Rochester, you've got the wrong slant on this. This will be fun. Imagine getting up when it's pitch dark and then getting into a canoe and gliding over the peaceful waters of June Lake. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then as the mist rises, the sun comes peeping over the horizon. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there we are on the lake. Just the two of us. Yeah, you and the sun. <laughs> You'll be there, too. Now, have you got everything packed in the Maxwell? Everything but the canoe. I don't know where to put it. Well, it's very simple. Tie the canoe on top of the car and turn it upside down. I can't turn it upside down. There's an Indian in it. <laughs> That's our guide. Put him in the back seat. Now, Rochester, don't forget to pack that sack of potatoes. That's what we'll eat up at the lake. Fish and chips. You mean fish and chops. I mean fish and chips. Fish and chops? I got a pig cooking in the radiator. <laughs> That's all we need, another squeal in that car. Now, let me supervise the packing, Rochester. I'll be back at the hotel right after the program. So, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boy. Now what? Are you going to visit that battleship like you told me? Yes, Rochester. We're leaving right away. Does that boat go all around the world? Yes, it does. Well, ask them to keep their eye open for the gas man. <laughs> Oh, you and the gas man. Goodbye. Goodbye. He'll get up at 4 a.m. or I'll know the reason why. Well, come on, fellas. Let's get over to that battleship. Now, stick close to me, fellas. There's a shore boat at the end of this dock that'll take us out of the battleship. See it out there in the middle of the harbor? That sure is a beautiful sight. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Benny, what are those things hanging down from the mast? From the mast? Oh, those are underwear. Uh, scrivies, we call them. You know? <laughs> it must be wash day. Those are flags. Can't you see they're all different colors? Oh, yes, flags. You're a fine sailor. Well, at this distance, anybody can make a mistake. Now, wait till we get aboard. I'll explain everything. Hey, Jackson, are we going to have trouble? They're pretty strict, you know. Don't worry, Phil. We've got a pass from the Admiral, and I met Captain Gearing, and I'm wearing my sailor suit. What more do you want? Hey, buddy, will you take us out of that battleship? Have you got a pass? Here you are. Well, let's get in the shore boat. Watch your step, Dennis. Careful now. Which side of the boat shall I sit on, Jack? Neither one, Don. Get right in the middle. <laughs> and don't lean either way. All right, buddy. We're all set now. Let's go. Okay. Heave ho! Come on! Anchor the way! Sit down in a boat. What do you think you are, a Marine? <laughs> Boy, this is a life sailing over the bounding main. I wish this boat wouldn't roll so much. Don't be a baby, Mary. You think, you think this boat is rolling? Well, I was in a storm on Lake Michigan once when the waves were over 150 feet high. Not only that, I was washed overboard. Were you drowned? <laughs> Never mind, just drive the boat. You mean steer the boat. All right, steer it, steer it. 
But no kidding, fellas, that was a real storm. I don't know how we ever came through it. Hey, how are you enjoying the ride, Phil? Well, to, to tell the truth, Jackson, it's a little rough. Oh, what are you talking about? Hey, these waves are getting pretty choppy, aren't they, Jack? Your call is choppy. Yeah, I don't feel so good. Oh, what a bunch of sissies. This is nothing. Why, in that storm on Lake Michigan, I thought for a while we'd never... Oh! <laughs> I thought we'd never... Oh! I thought... What's the matter, Jack? Change seats with me, Mary. I want to sit on the outside where I can enjoy the... Oh! View. Quick, move over. Quick. Hey, Jackson, you ain't seasick, are you? Of course not. How can I be seasick with a sailor suit on? You'll make it. No, I... I feel fine. Of course. Of course, the harbor is pretty rough today, isn't it, buddy? No, I feel... Oh, fine. <laughs> Oh, fine. But you know, this doesn't compare with that storm on Lake... Oh, Michigan. You know, when we started out... Do you want a bite of this banana, Mr. Benny? Put that away or I'll club you. <laughs> hey, buddy, on second thought, I don't think we want to look at the battleship today. I came here to visit a battleship and I want to be one. Here we are, Jack, right up alongside us. <laughs> You want to be a battleship? <laughs> okay, watch your step, getting out. <laughs> ah, this is some battleship. Okay, give me your arm, Mary. Bring along my camera, Dennis. I've got it. Be careful going up the... Oh, gangway. <laughs> well, this is better. How do you feel now, Jackson? Fine, Bill. You know, to tell the truth, I haven't been on water in years. I only went on it after I got married. <laughs> we know, Phil. The only time you've been in the gutter lately is to pick up your guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, look at all those sailors. They sure have a big crew. Yeah. Just a moment, please, where you going? We've got a pass to visit this battleship. Yeah, we got permission. Salute when you speak to an officer. Aye, aye, sir. You see, fellas, he thinks I'm a real sailor. I look like one, too. Come on, kids. Well, we're certainly lucky that you're along with us, Jack. You said it. Anything you want to know about this battleship, just ask me. Where's the ladies' room? <laughs> Don't be cute, Mary. It's a battleship. Now, kids, first I'll show you around this floor, and then I'll take you downstairs, and uh, I'll take you downstairs and show you the crow's nest. <laughs> no, it's worth seeing. Jack, even I know that the crow's nest is up on the mast. Well, this one slipped. <laughs> Come over here, fellas. Look at that sign. Ship's galley. What's a galley, Mr. Benny? Well, the galley, Dennis, is where they steer the ship. They... <laughs> Now, come on, kids. I'm going to show you this whole boat from one stern to the other. <laughs> Let's go. Lead the way, Lavalier. Follow me. Ah, and here we are, back to the gangway. It was a swell tour, wasn't it? Now, get in the shore boat, fellas. Uh, Mary and I will join you in a second. Come here, Mary. I want to take your picture. Stand alongside of those big guns. I want to get a nice background. Okay. Back a little now. That's it. Now, don't look right in the camera. Be nonchalant. Go ahead, smile. What are you doing there, Taylor? I'm taking a picture. A smile, Mary. There. There, that's better. Give me that camera. You know taking pictures on a battleship is against regulations. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. You're sorry, sir. That's right, sir. Well, come on, Mary, let's go. Wait a minute, sailor. Where do you think you're going? I'm going ashore. My gang's waiting for me. You're not going anyplace. You're staying right here on this ship. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, I get it. You think I'm a sailor stationed on this ship. <laughs> That's a good one. Come on, Mary. So long, buddy. Don't buddy me. I'm an officer. But look. And stand at attention. Aye, aye, sir. I mean, what, what's going on here? Mary. Mary, tell him who I am. Tell him what my name is. How do I know? I just met you at the Paris Inn last night. <laughs> Mary, this is no time to joke. Tell him who I am. So long, sailor. Mary, come back here. You can't leave me like this. I know how you feel, sailor, but when duty calls, we all have to leave our girls behind us. What duty? What are you talking about? We're shoving off right now. I'm not shoving off anywhere. I start my vacation next week. I'm going on a fishing trip. There'll be plenty of fish where we're going, sailor. <laughs> sailor, look, I'm trying to explain to you. Now pull yourself together. And look at your uniform. There's a button missing. That button has been missing for 20 years. Now look, mister. What's that? Hey, we're moving. Stop the ship. You can't do this to me. Mary, down. Oh, we're moving. <laughs> Please. Now, take it easy, sailor. We'll be back in a month or so. A month? How can I go away for a month? 
I tell you, I'm going on a fishing trip. My plans are all made. It's too late to change them. Now, you got to listen to me. You can't keep me here. I'll make trouble. That's what I'll do. I'll make trouble. And we'll all be with you again on Sunday, October the 5th. In the meanwhile, what will happen to our hero? Will it be back in time for the new season? Tune in October 5th and find out. Mary, Don, Phil, Dennis. Come after me. Tell this guy who I am. Come on, sailor. Swab that deck. Hi, I, sir. Terry Wood got me into this. Good night, folks. See you in October. Thank <laughs> you.